the very best of mornings to you. Good morning, welcome to it. My name is Graham Richards. Yes, you are locked in tight and ready for your feel good breakfast show, a brand new kickstart to a week and an opportunity to reframe our week, yes, our day, but maybe our minds and our mental state. It's a mental health Monday on your feel good breakfast show and we absolutely love this morning. We are focusing on the topic of breakups. I know it's tough. It can be a really difficult thing even to think about, let alone go through. We are with you. We are at your side today. We've got you by the hand and we've all been through it. So don't think that you're alone in what you're going through right now. But it's a time we do with um, that, just do something kind of to shift gears in that raw phase of that uh, journey that, as I said, can be so difficult. So this morning, we're going to help you do that. We're going to be joined by a panel of experts, a blogger and influencer, Karen Kruger, motivational speaker and radio personality, Jeffrey Kahn, and then writer Alistair Mackey. And they are here to share some of their tips. And as I said, for all of us to be able to just talk and vent, this is a safe space, as you know, is every day an opportunity for you to just get it off your chest and hopefully also have a little bit of fun because there will be some lighter sides today um, but it's been a, a really important uh, weekend I'm sure you've got lots to share with us as well and if you want to share anything about this particular mental health Monday give us a shout 0634088863 is the whatsapp line to use if you want to send us pictures or especially those voice notes around the topic this morning but let's um, broaden our circle and uh, introduce another one of our absolute favorites this morning good morning Zozo how was the weekend Oh, morning, G-Man. You know what? It was a good weekend. I managed to watch the game. I am so proud of the Stormers. Yes, for a home final. But of course, we will unpack all of the sport in the, throughout the show this morning. But it's time for us to say good morning to you. And every morning, we start the show off with a good morning post on social media. And today, we are asking you, have you recently experienced a breakup? What was it that got you through the heartache? Get involved in our conversation and please WhatsApp us. We want to hear your voice note. That number is 063-408-8863. Now, a breakup is never, never easy. And I, for me, relying on my friends has really been uh, the highlight of being able to just get through it. Standing together, getting their insights, be, let the girlfriends be with you. That was something that has helped me through a breakup. But what has helped you? Let us know on WhatsApp and we will be revealing those answers as well as those voice notes throughout the show. But it's time for us to get the morning going. Here's Wasty with the morning headlines. Good morning, I'm Carl Wasty. This is a Feel Good Breakfast Show indeed, but let's start you off with your news of the morning. Now, the homes of uh, that of at least five families were gutted by the devastating fire that ripped through houses in Silver Worm Kloof, a road close to Halderberg Nature Reserve in Somerset West. Over the weekend, our residents described the fire as devastating. It started on the slopes of Lodensford Estate on Wednesday and spread as winds picked up. A total of 24 firefighting appliances and uh, some 100 firefighters uh, fought the flames. Two firefighters were injured and animals had to be evacuated. Air support was also uh, water bombing the fire as well. Of course, our thoughts and prayers are there for everybody who was affected by that particular fire. Now, Johannesburg Mayor uh, Dr. Mpo Palatse uh, says the Metro Council is making plans to relocate the residents of an informal settlement uh, near Kwamai Mai after a fire left to them homeless uh, yesterday morning. More than 400 homes were destroyed. One person died and another was seriously injured. The cause of the fire is not known. Uh, Palazze uh, visited the scene to determine the extent of the damage. She said victims would be temporarily housed in a community hall. The relocation of the victims could take uh, between 72 hours and a week, she said. On to international news, an overloaded ship crammed with thousands of sheep capsized uh, yesterday off Sudan's uh, Red Sea coast, drowning the animals on board, but all crew members survived. The livestock vessel was heading from Sudan's port of uh, Suakin to Saudi Arabia when it ran into trouble in the Red Sea. A senior Sudanese port official said it was carrying some 15,800 sheep, which was way beyond its load limits. Another official who said that all crew were rescued raised concerns over the economic and environmental impact of the tragedy. A cross-party group, meanwhile, of U.S. senators say they have agreed on a framework for potential legislation on gun safety. The measures would include support for tougher background checks for buyers under the age of 21. Crucially, the proposals are supported by 10 Republicans, meaning they have the numbers to be voted into law. President Joe Biden said the plans were steps uh, in, in, well, step in the right direction, but fall far short of what he called uh, for thousands of, uh, pro well, thousands of protesters rallied 
across the U.S. on Saturday to call for stricter gun laws. Now, a huge sunfish has been rescued from the Robinson uh, Dry Dock in the Vienna waterfront in Cape Town by staff of the Two Oceans Aquarium. The fish had become trapped in the dock as water was being drained out and it had to be airlifted by crane. Claire Taylor, marine animal welfare specialist for the Two Oceans Aquarium, was alerted of the sun fisher's predicament and she rapidly organized the rescue team. Uh, Tina Williams, the dry dock pump operator, agreed to drop uh, the water in the dock so the rescue team could safely work. Research uh, that's assistant, uh, Kelly Chateau Seister, said the distress sunfish was quite weak, so it was fairly easy to flip it on its side to load onto a stretcher and swim it across the steps of the dry dock. Together with the stretcher, the sunfish weighed 760 kilograms and had a total length of 160 centimeters. Once out of the harbor, we released it, held, to, held onto it uh, for a few minutes to check if it's breathing before it swam off strongly, added Chateau Seister. Well, that's a wrap of the news for now. There's another update for you in one hour on your Feel Good Breakfast Show, but let's take a peek at the sport. Here's Graham. That was one heavy sunrise, Carl. We'll get into more of our sunrises in just a moment in our weather. But right now, let's bring you up to speed with the sport. What a weekend from a South African perspective. Let's start with cricket. Heinrich Klaassen powering South Africa to a four-wicket victory with a match winning 81. That was in the second T20 against India in Katak on Sunday evening. So the Proteas, they now lead the five-match series 2-0. And it was Klaassen. He was back to his brilliant best after only returning to the Proteas starting 11 due to Quinton de Kock's injured finger. And it was an inning South Africa actually required after Bhuvaneshwar Kumar showed off his... Uh, that's a class and experience, I think, to rock South Africa's chase with four wickets. Klaassen and Temba Bavuma, they put on 64 for that fourth wicket to steady the ship for the visitors before David Miller chipped in with 20 not out to finish the innings off. Then on to rugby. Of course, we'll get into the United Rugby Championship. Thrills and spills in just a moment in our weekend roundup. But let's start now with our international news. And Springbok coach Shark Nenaba has announced a 43-man squad on Saturday for the international season ahead. And the season will feature in the July series, of course, against Wales, then the Rugby Championship and the Euron Tour, which will likely include three South African A games as well. So with the Stormers and the Bulls in that final of the URC, it's no surprise to see a number of their players in the squad. The Cape side represented by Evan Ruiz. He's got his call-up, Dian Fauri, Warwick Khalant and Salman Murat, Marvin Ori, Stephen Kitsoff, Franz Malherber, Herschel Yankees and Damien Willemser. They've all shone throughout the season. And Marcel Kutsia, Alec Lowe, Ron Nukir and Kirtley Aronsa are the Bulls' representatives. There are also eight uncapped players in that squad, including Ruiz, Lowe, Nurkir, Murat, Fauri, Aronsa, Scrum half Grant Williams and prop Ntukuto, uh, Tutuko Mchunu, another star on the rise. Then we return to the track and on four wheels. This time, Formula One world champion Max Verstappen led a Red Bull 1 2 in yesterday's Azerbaijan Grand Prix. That was after pole sitter Charles Leclerc and Ferrari endured another dose of misery with a double retirement this time round. Sergio Perez had jumped Leclerc to their first turn before Verstappen took control as the Ferraris of Carla Saints and then Leclerc retired with engine problems. George Russell took third ahead of teammate Lewis Hamilton, who needed a helping elbow to climb out of his cockpit, such was the state of the back um, of his back after an afternoon of being jolted around his bouncing car. It really did take its toll, clearly. Verstappen's fifth win of the season and the 25th of his career now tightens his grip on the driver's standings with Perez moving into second place, 21 points behind, while Leclerc slipped to 34 points. It's now a drift of the top. And then we move on to golf. Well, it was said to be by many a very risky bet, but it's a bet that's paid off for South Africa's Charles Swartzel. He held off compatriot Henny Duplessis to claim the biggest paycheck in golf history at the opening event of the Live Inton, uh, Invitational Series. Now, the 37-year-old, led by three strokes, going into the third and final round at the Centurion Course north of London, and then consolidated with a round of 72 to seal the $4 million price purse. Now, Schwarzel 
whose previous highest paycheck was the 1.4 million that he scooped for winning the 2011 Masters, ended on seven under with Duplessis finishing a one stroke adrift. Then another South African, Brandon Grace, finished third on five under, all three playing for the Stingers team, who easily won the team element of the new series. And I suppose underpinning how successful it was as a breakaway tour. But again, I say watch the space. We're going to delve into all of the United Rugby Championship drama and some of the Proteus action in a moment. But right now, let's uh, see what the skies look like above your house. <laughs> And if your house is in Cape Town, it's going to be a grey and gloomy 48 hours. Cape Town is on course for a major rainfall over the next 48 hours or so. Over 100 millimetres could fall in isolated regions. The latest cold front has made landfall with the first bits of rain reported last, eve last night. And today we'll see downpours lasting most of the day. It's forecast that it is the early hours of tomorrow rain will pummel Cape Town and environs right through through to Wednesday. Less severe downpours are forecast between Cape Agullis and Plettenberg Bay. Central and eastern regions of the Western Cape will see a few intermittent showers. It's Cape Town, the, uh, the Cape Town Winelands, the parts over the Overberg that will receive much rain, and Cape Town to receive between 75 and 90 millimeters over the next two days. Only rural parts of Paul and Groot Drakenstein will receive a higher share, where some 100 millimeters can be expected before Wednesday. Well, from your weather news, we now turn our attention to your sunrise views, and we love starting the mornings off showcasing your sunrise photos that we receive on the Expresso WhatsApp line. Lee from George woke up extra early for this image that was that really captures a moody shot of the sky filled with thick cloud cover and the sun peeking through in the distance. And then sticking to the Western Cape, Owen from Lakeside shared this stunning photo of the sky lighting up with an orange hue as the sun begins to rise from behind the mountains absolutely beautiful well don't forget if you would like to share your sunrise photo with us please send it through to our whatsapp line that number is on your screen right now it's 063 408 8863. Let's look at your temperatures. Paul Aquane, a low of four and a high of 23. Um, if you are Mbombela, eight is your low, 28 your high. Pretoria, seven, reaching a high of 20. Johannesburg, five with a high of 18. Mahiking, your low is seven, your high 21. Gladstone, partly cloudy, a low of six and a high of 22. Kimberley, 11, reaching a high of 22. Bloemfontein, five with a high of 20. If you're in Richards, Bay, 11 is your low, 28 your high. Peter Maritzburg, partly cloudy, a low of 9 and a high of 27. Durban, 16, 25. Mtata, 10, reaching a high of 25. If you're in East London, 19 is your low, 28 your high. Craddock, 11, reaching a high of 23. Kabecha, 14, with a high of 26 for today. If you're in George, a low of 12 and a high of 23 for today. A rainy day in Cape Town, 12 is your low, 17 your high. Worcester, 9, with a high of 17. If you're in Sutherland, a low of 3 and a high of 13 for today. And Uppington, partly cloudy, a low of 9 and a high of 26 degrees Celsius. Well, that's where I leave your weather for now. Another update coming your way shortly after 7. Thank you so much, Zozo. How are you, brother? How yes, you so man? good. It's, it's a Monday. You know, Monday is a good, good platform, a good start. And I love the fact that we focus on mental health on a Monday. It's, yeah. it's one of the most stressful Completely. days on, on the calendar, basically. I was so joking about it. I stuck in a quick, quick gym session yesterday and yes. went into the sauna. It's my new thing, the sauna. Oh, the sauna. And, and normally, like, you can get some great advice there. Oh, so quiet. Oh, I was very deep <laughs> contemplation about a Monday. Um, it can be stressful, yes, yeah. but as I said earlier, an opportunity maybe for us to reframe our world just a little bit and set the tone for the rest of the week. So should we inspire them with something nice? I think it's quite important to do so. And this is why we want to bring you a little quotation, something that you can actually take on board if you have anything to add to it. This is why we love your interactions around it. And this is from a New York blogger turned author uh, named Mandy Hale. And this is the, the quote for you. You can love them. <laughs> forgive them, want good things for them, but still move on without them. That person is Mandy Hale. 
Man, clearly Power. she's been through a breakup. No, no, she's <laughs> been there. And we've all been there, dude. You've yeah. been there. I know you Absolutely. have. We speak about such things, being these emotional men that we are. And if you're going through that right now, we want to connect with you. We're going to be bringing in a wonderful panel of experts and human beings to chat about part of the human condition. Have you been through a breakup? We'll help you get through the worst of it. If you're in the rapids right now, yeah. we'll be that hand. We'll be that life raft, that, that uh, buoy that you can <laughs> jump on and hopefully we'll get you through it. And 063... 408863 is the WhatsApp line to use if you want to send us any voice notes. Don't cry. Well, you can cry if you want to. Yeah, you cry. yeah, do it. We got your back. <laughs> your generosity can ignite a love for reading amongst our youth. Share your homegrown story. See Cadbury Story Edition Packs. There's a glass and a half in everyone. Feel Good Breakfast Show and you are just in time because there is no getting around it. When we're talking relationships, breakups are terrible, but even if they are handled with compassion, they still hurt and they can shake you to your core, causing you to question your confidence and your faith in love itself. Now, it is a culture that emphasizes forever as a relationship goal, but we are also made to feel like an ending is a failure. But is your breakup really that devastating or could it just be the start to a new and improved life? That is the questions we are asking today. And I like the positivity around it though. You know, when one door closes, another opens. So let's look at uh, the glass half full. As we always do on your Feel Good Breakfast Show, today we discuss breakups and the aftermath thereof. Our panel of uh, experts consists of motivational speaker and radio personality Jeffrey Kahn. We've got social media, um, a cat, well, social media blogger, influencer, and resident extraordinaire Karen Kruger, as well as our writer Alistair McKay, as well. He will be giving us some insights as we discuss this, unpack this, and remember you are involved as well. 063 We'd love to hear your thoughts and feelings as we get into the panel. Welcome, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like we need to dive right into this because as seasons change, I feel like people tend to go through these breakups. Okay. And uh, Jeffrey, I'm going to start off with you. When it comes to, you know, that heartache that comes with a breakup, where do we start to pick up the pieces? I think the pieces start long before the breakup. That's, uh, that's the problem. And so trying to pick it up afterwards is a bit of a problem. You need to try and pick up what's coming, because breakups don't happen over a weekend. Mm -mm. They happen over a period of time. And so it's, it's understandable that you'll start feeling bad and start feeling a bit uncomfortable and frustrated within the relationship um, long before the actual breakup itself. And so uh, mentally, you need to get yourself ready for that. And uh, you know, it's not that easy. Uh, these are very difficult times. And it hurts a lot of people, and it's hurting people around you as well. So mm. yeah. 
So you touched on mentally, Jeffrey, but of course there's a, a physical aspect as well, which actually can be manifested due to the, the psychosomatics of the whole thing. I mean, uh, trauma up here, you can feel it all over. So, I mean, Karen, from your side, I mean, I, I would only assume that you've been through a yes, breakup. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the, <laughs> no, no, I, I, everybody has. And, you know, there are some like physical manifestations, you know, sometimes you do feel like that physical pain. Has that ever happened to you? Yes, it has indeed. I am an eater, as you can see. I couldn't eat, I can't sleep, I've been crying. So yes, most definitely, it has happened to me. I spend nights, weeks, not sleeping, yeah. not being able to eat, crying myself yeah. to sleep, having mental breakdown, so most definitely, yes. And it's difficult yes, when it that is, happens. It is extremely difficult. And as you mentioned, like you don't know where um, to start to pick up the pieces, but it does start in the relationship already, as, mm. as mentioned. So, yes. Now, <laughs> I find that being broken up to is sometimes more difficult to process than being the one doing the breakup. Now, Alistair, with, I wanted to know from you, why is it when it comes to breakup, so many of us look inwards and we blame ourselves and we try and find the flaw within ourselves when that breaking up process happens and, you know, we, we blame ourselves. We do, and it's, and it's so sad that we do that. I think, I think it's often so painful and we feel so rejected that we, to try and make sense of of what's happening to us and why we feel so so hurt we then either blame ourselves or blame our partner and often if we're still in love with the partner then we think they are perfect so we turn towards ourselves and blame ourselves and i think we all have a tendency to be much harder on ourselves than we are on anybody else um, so i think it's quite important to remember that there's loads of reasons why a relationship could end and a, a lot of them may not be your own your own stuff it could be bad timing or your partner's not ready for the kind of intimacy that you want um, it's not necessarily a bad reflection on yourself but I think maybe it is important to listen to what they're saying and try and take it on board, but, but to, to know what is worth taking on board and reflecting on. I think introspection is important, but not for the sake of beating ourselves up, you know? Mm. Yeah. So with that in mind, often we, we think about what we've just said about breakups and this particular thing is, it's a, it's a self-inflicted thing that we have. We almost sometimes feel like we have to punish ourselves for the relationship ending. Mm. And then what happens naturally is that you, you try and find a vice, a distraction, or a means to, to punish oneself, to feel like you've actually found a resolution, which is often very negative. Uh, Jeffrey, I want to throw this one to you. What are your thoughts on us finding these vices, poor habits to try and, and cope with this terrible ordeal? That's escape, uh, escape from pain. That's all that is. You yeah. know, um, any kind of vice or any kind of addiction is an escape from pain. Mm. So, um, I, yeah, I think, yes, I think become the vice that goes to the gym in the morning, rather. <laughs> <laughs> you know, instead of, uh, instead of doing the stuff, just, uh, or drinking or whatever it is, yeah. or meeting the mates in the bar or whatever, just go to gym or do something, go walk on the beach, do something different, but do something different that's, that gives you endorphins and, and makes you feel good and is positive for you as well. Mm. You know, I think that's really important. It's, it's not easy. Uh, you know, you don't want to get out of bed in the morning and you don't want to do this and you had a rough night. But try and get up to the gym. I think that's quite important. Uh, those endorphins are really, really mm. important. And that's a better advice to get into. Oh. I hear you. Now, Karen, you mentioned earlier the physical, you know, manifestations that took place when you experienced a breakup. How did you shake yourself out of that? What, what was that first step where you realized, hang on, this is not me, this is not what I want to do, I actually want to heal myself? Yeah. Firstly, I started by praying, very importantly, I prayed, and I told myself that I'm better than this, and if anyone makes me feel like I am currently feeling they don't deserve me, so I need to pick myself up like I am that gush girl. Yes. Come on, girl. Yes, girl. Yes, yes girl. So I started there. <laughs> oh, I love that. That is, that is the motivation we need, and, yes. and, and it's so important for us to continue this conversation, and we will. We're just getting started with our panels, so do stay tuned as we unpack more of the effects of a breakup, the aftermath as well, with a panel of experts to share your story. Uh, voice note us right now, 0634088863. And Jeffrey was mentioning that when it comes to vices, maybe throw it into something physical, something that will build you after something that is broken. And the perfect person when it comes to building, especially bodybuilding, is Ryle, who is standing by with a little workout for you to give you a, a positive distraction. 
Uh, yes, thank you so much, team. And oh, we are doing something differently when it comes to fitness this morning, but we're definitely going to still have so much fun. Now, we're out at Leopard Legree, out at the Point Mall, and what an incredible venue. I'll take you through it in just a bit when we actually do the workout, but I want to find out about something incredible. It's a beautiful piece of equipment that can stimulate almost every part of your body, but yet to show us more about it is, of course, Beata, all the way from Munich. Beata, how are you doing this morning? Yeah, thank you for having us. <laughs> Look, I'm so excited. Great. I don't know what I'm actually looking at, but it looks like there's a lot going on. It's called the Mega Former, I believe. Exactly. Yeah. What's happening here? What is this? Yeah, I'm going to give you a quick rundown okay. of the machine. So it was created by Sebastian Legree, French guy who went to the US. Okay. And yeah, he created this incredible machine. We have two solid platforms, front and back. Then we have, uh, just to give you a bit of terminology, high handlebars, curvy handlebars, high handlebars also at the back. All right. And then most important, we have the movable carriage. Ah, so we're working okay. with this guy. You see you have lines and numbers that give you a bit of orientation where to put your hands or feet on, straps where you can hook toes under, for example, and most important, the springs. So we work with resistance in Lagree Fitness. You change the springs by bringing oh, it up and okay. down. So you can see doing it up and down, the black ones refer to about 20 kgs, the white one about three and a half. Okay. So Important is that we always want to keep the carriage and therefore the muscles under constant tension. So we never want to hear that bumpy noise. Yeah. Every instructor hates that. <laughs> <laughs> so then we have some more accessories. We have long black cables over here, straps you can use for the feet. We usually use this for upper body work when we're on the carriage. And then we have a second pair of the short cables uh -huh. when we work out the back or behind the machine. So you can, for example, do like bicep curl or stuff. So endless possibilities, it never gets boring. Um, going back to the front, yeah. we have a bungee cord, which is a best friend of your hamstrings, Ooh. I can promise you. We have specialists are gonna love that. <laughs> yeah. And the pole that we normally use for like doing, um, when we do lunges to balance it out. But you can also use it as an additional weight. Yeah. So the possibilities are almost endless. And possibilities are endless, the fact that you can do so much with it, but who is this exactly for though? Because I'd imagine there might be an association with this just being like a chill style of training maybe, but it can an Try it out? Can someone that's getting into fitness try it out? Who is this for exactly? So it's basically for everybody. So it's, I can promise you, it's challenging. Okay. <laughs> it will challenge everybody, even super fit people. This is also quite nice because, yeah, even if you think, oh, I'm quite fit, you will have your struggles. Okay, <laughs> I, I can like promise. That. And I see but there's more than one here as well. So does that mean that it's a class environment? Yeah. Are you doing it on your own? Mm -hmm. You have like seven, so we here have seven machines. Um, it's 50 minutes, full body, the instructor is walking around and just queuing, so not physically doing the class. It's always important to have an eye on form, so nice. form is always first. It's low impact on your joints, so you will, you will have no jumping, no running, no up and down. Very slow and controlled movements, so form always crucial, but fast transitions. That means your heart rate will be uh, like upgraded and yeah, we try to really fatigue the muscle, one muscle group after the other, and to really create that lean and sculpted look. Oh, well, I'm getting excited now, and I'm still curious as to exactly all of the things that you can do on this, but don't worry, Mzansi, we're gonna find out exactly what's going on when it comes to this mega reform of, uh, well, don't worry, because we're gonna be doing a workout, and I'm gonna be putting myself to the paces, so wish me luck, challenge accepted, and uh, let's wait. see how this goes. <laughs> we'll see you soon. <laughs>
Relationships this Monday morning on your Feel Good Breakfast show on S3. And if you've been broken up with, you may be grappling with the very real pain of rejection on top of mourning a lost love. Now, when you're the one ending things, there's often guilt swirled into your sadness. Either way, the question remains, where to from here? Now, we are back with our discussion panel about breakups and the aftermath. Featuring our panel, we have Jeffrey Kahn, Alistair McKay, as well as Karen Kruger to share their stories with us, but also to help listen to yours. Please share them with us on voice notes. We have that WhatsApp line open. That number is 063-408-8863. Make sure you have a voice note now. Caleb from Joburg wanted to weigh in. Good morning, Expresso panel and viewers. I must say, uh, with regards to my breakup, the only thing that helped was time. It took time took time for self-reflection and to establish what you did wrong, what the other party, did, how they were wrong, and trying to be a better person to the next person you decide to give your heart to. But I believe time is what a person needs to get through a breakup. Time is a wow. tricky one because some people need a lot of time, yeah. like myself, and then I have friends who can move on so quickly and I actually envy that of them. Um, Alistair, I'm, I'm going to start with you. Do you think it's possible, do you find it, is it more difficult to date within the queer community? Like, can you stay friends after a breakup? Um. I, th I, de I definitely think you can. I think it's tricky, as everyone said, and as that, uh, as that gentleman just said, I think it does yeah. take a bit of time. Um, one of my best friends in the world is actually an ex-boyfriend an ex of mine. And we lived together and we tried to transition into being friends while remaining living together, and that was a terrible mistake. <laughs> uh, I think you do need to take a bit of time to sort of lick your wounds and, and deal with the loss and mourn what you have lost. But often, you know, what drew you to a partner is is real and, and there's something there, there, there's a deep friendship at the heart of the relationship. Yes. And so it seems sad to, to lose that. Yeah. Um, I also think maybe if you are if you are queer, it's just the, the community is too small for feuds. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> you might have to be friends with your exes because you're going to run into them a lot. Uh, they probably have similar friends to you. So it's just, it's nice if you can, if you can transition into a friendship, but I think it does take some time uh, and I wouldn't rush that process. Okay. Well, when it comes to this whole breakup thing, we have social media. So I feel like a breakup back in the day, it may have been a lot different from what it is right now because you could still follow the activity of your exes online. You can still keep on following this person to check what they're up to. Or maybe it's just to press the bruise a bit and to just kind of like hang on in some way. So Karen, I wanna put this to you. Uh, what are your thoughts on after the breakup, still having that person on your timeline, you know? Or is the breakup uh, supposed to ripping, ripping the plaster off you immediately and just saying, like, I'm gonna block you on all platforms and I'm gonna move on with my life? Like, what do you think is the, is the best processing for, for you, actually? I mean, what did you do? No, definitely. I believe out of sight, out of mind. So <laughs> <laughs> if you're gone, you're gone. I move on like I can move on. So I would definitely say no. I would block and move on because we do tend to go back to your profile picture, stalk here and there, see who's commenting, <laughs> but the may see a steam. Was she there before? If I say you that, know what I'm yeah. that but, mm -mm. <laughs> so no, most definitely I would I prefer yeah. blocking, moving on, and just closing that chapter. Okay. So, yeah. I always found that, you know, I didn't want to be the person that did the blocking first. I didn't want to come across as petty. Yeah. That, 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 but I would mute. I would mute, mute or completely stay off social media and my friends and family members have this habit of look at me now syndrome. Yes. Where they just look <laughs> all kinds of fabulous and living <laughs> I am much like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're laughing here, but, it, you know, breakups, they're difficult, they're hard, and especially if it's been a long-term relationship and your social circle is now also becoming torn. Yeah. Who keeps who in the divorce? That's often the thing. But how, how do you navigate that? If you and your partner decide, okay, we're going to go our separate ways, 
as friends or towards the friends, what would be the best way to handle a situation? You can't navigate that. <clears throat> friends make up their own minds, okay. and it's and it'll be immediate. It'll be an immediate decision. Um, they're very sad. They don't quite know what to say. They don't know how to handle it. So they sometimes stay away, they withdraw, and you say, why are they not speaking to me anymore? I mean, these are friends of ours for years and years and years, why yeah. are they not speaking to us? And, and they just don't know. It's like, it's like almost in a, in a divorce with kids. The kids are older, or a little bit older, they don't quite know what to say to mom and dad, you know, what, what do we say? And, and so they withdraw, and they go to the one side and the other side, and the other one's getting jealous because they're spending more time with the other. But the kids are in a coma, they don't know, what, they don't know what's going on, and yeah. they don't know how to handle it. And the same with friends. Mm. They, they pretty don't know how to handle it. You'll see who your friends are. Um, and eventually, those that have gone away will eventually come back when everything's settled in your life. They will eventually come back in your life, mm -hmm. or they won't. Ah, uh, well. Uh, but then again, then you'll know which ones are worth keeping, I suppose, if they, you know. <laughs> exactly. That's that uh, thing people filter themselves out. But uh, Alistair, Karen and Jeffrey are still here. We have another part for you where we have to unpack breakups. If you have any commentary, 063-408-8860. We'd love to hear from you. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Ay, 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 breakups. I hate them. But if you're looking for something simple, right, that's going to keep you and your relationship with your food, something that's simple but yet scrumptious to treat dad this Father's Day and keep you guys together in that way, our Clover Fruits of the Forest mixed berry and banana pudding is here to save the day. Now, all you need are a few ingredients and there's no baking involved, which you're going to love and I already do love. And Jenny Morris, otherwise known as Elvis Presley sometimes, <laughs> is in the heart. Oh, how you doing, know, baby? <laughs> how you doing, Hello, Jess? darling. I'm good, thank you. Fabulous. This is really awesome because I think uh, most dads, uh, you know, secretly are into the uh, sweet treats. Her dads are always into sweet treats, and let me tell you, this is good breakup food as well. It's like, ah, oh, comfort This food. is perfect when you are going through that breakup and you really just Ooh. want to treat yourself to something really delectable, which is fantastic. But I love that it's convenient, Jenny, and we're yes. making a pudding without the need to bake a thing. <clears throat> and it's so easy, darling, and it's these beautiful berries. Look at this. It's the fruits of the forest. Yeah. It's got all the yumminess in it. So what's it going into? This is an instant pudding. Okay. And um, I can remember, I was just chatting, in fact, yesterday about growing up where um, sometimes you would have the instant puddings with a tinned fruit. Oh, yeah? You know? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And, and, and that would be like with Sunday lunch. So this is literally the instant pudding. It's our fruits of the forest. I love that. But tell me what's... Uh, so you had flour in there, right? No, that was, that was my flour? instant pudding. Oh, is that the instant pudding That's the instant itself. pudding. I thought it had a <laughs> colour. It's just... OK, OK, OK. But then, of course, we uh, threw in our fruits of the forest. And yes. we know that our clover fruits of the forest dairy snack has a creamy taste with crunchy fruit, and you can also use any flavor for the filling. It's a source of so many vitamins, 10 of them. And if you're looking for breakfast on the go, try Fruits of the Forest with cereal ready to enjoy wherever, whenever, and anywhere. I love that. <laughs> so you're whisk, whisk, whisking. Yes, and and look at you see how it thickens up so beautifully. Yeah, it looks so, so creamy. It really is. Hey? And, and basically, we, we're going to, you're going to slice that banana. Okay. I'm going to put just a tiny little bit of this on the bottom. Mm. Do you want the banana peeled? Of course. Okay. Want a banana peeled, yeah. and then I'm going to stick some of this on the bottom. Mm. And then while you slice it into little slices, I'm going mm. to do this with the Z biscuit. Do you know what I really do like yes. about this sort of thing? Is you really can add your own flavor and find all sorts Anything. of different fruits that you can add to it to make it colorful, number one. Yes. Uh, but also, you know, uh, uh, to suit Dad's taste, right? Listen, Daddy's going to mm. love this. You'll be making this the whole year round. Can you, can you get some bananas um, onto that for me? Mm. Isn't that delicious? I do love that. I love but now tell me, uh, do the bananas go, oh, okay, are you been gonna layering here? They're going to layer. Okay. Uh, so if, oh, look at him, he just thrown it in. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. You do want to, uh, if you are dead eating this, you want to just like rock up to some <laughs> nice chunky bananas in there. I mean, come on. <laughs> okay, seeing that we, we're doing it like this, uh -huh. let's shake this baby. Mm. Um, do you want lots of, I love the crumbs. I love the crumbs. Oh. I do love them. So get another layer of that creaminess going in there. Let's make a big layer. Make it like the most 
generous layer that you can make. All right, we're just daddy, we do love. it. Do it, do it, do it. If you want this recipe, we've made this super easy and simple for you as well. Go on our site, it's expressoshow.com. On there, we've got a whole list of all of the ingredients you are going to need. Uh, very quick and easy to make. You will see very, very few ingredients needed, uh, but our clover fruits of the forest is where it's at. Ooh, look at that, Jenny. Yeah. Love it. You said you wanted it generous. Generous, as generous as you can be with that. I'm trying to hide the mess, okay? <laughs> <laughs> We've sort of turned this into an eaten mess of some sort, but please do go out and uh, enjoy this recipe on expressoshow.com. Okay, I'll have this. All right, you'll have now, that. On behalf of all yes. the dads. Thanks, yes. Jenny. Happy Father's Day, oh, darling. Thank you. Yum. Mm. Fruits of the Forest from Clover just added real cereal crunch. A symphony of fruit, oats, seeds, and granola crunch. <laughs> Fruits of the Forest. Real fruit, real cereal, real taste. Made with love by Clover. Is your feel-good breakfast show. This is Expresso live in S3, and we're back to our discussion about breakups and the aftermath, featuring our panel, Jeffrey Kahn, Alistair McKay, as well as Karen Kruger. Earlier, we explored some of the symptoms that transpired immediately after a painful split. We delve a little deeper now in that discussion. Before we get there, we got Kurt from Durbanville, who'd like to weigh into our discussion. Good morning, Expresso family. So what's important is you have to program your brain telling your brain that that person isn't in the picture anymore, you have to, re to constantly remind yourself of your worth, knowing that you are worth it, knowing that you did your best to be in that relationship and trying to build it. Also, you have to cut contact with that person for as long as possible. Thank you, Kurt from Durbanville. I appreciate that. If you want to weigh in, please feel free. 63 uh, Let's continue, shall we? There we go. Well, Karen, I'm going to kick it off with you. You know, after the breakup, how soon after the breakup should you go and collect your belongings, if at all? Not at all. <laughs> you, you cut your ties with all. the person and your things. Completely, like, cut off, dead cut off. I've never been that person that's like... Bring my stuff, I need my stuff, I want my stuff, we're not together anymore, so I want what's mine. No, I've never been that person. So you I close that chapter with my belongings and all out where you're like, can <laughs> just go, oh whatever you word. do with it. 
it's, it's on you. And the gifts they gave you, do you now all of a sudden hate the perfume? No, not at all, not at all. Yeah, or that, I the will... lipstick they gave you from Rihanna. Yes. Yeah, okay. No, I will keep it and just be like, okay, I deserve this, so it's fine. <laughs> Yes! That's what it is. It's about reframing. Yes, isn't most it? definitely. Changing your mindset. Yeah. Okay, that is, that is fair. That's good to hear. I feel like so many people are like, I shouldn't have given it back. Now they're going to call the ex. Wait, you know the thing I gave back to you? I want it back. After I gave it back. But, uh, Alistair, let's, yeah. let's talk about something that is also very controversial. After a breakup, often we find ourselves needing to um, escape. We spoke about escapism a little earlier, but that escape can sometimes be in the arms of another. <laughs> sometimes we need to rebound, and sometimes there's that, that hookup that where it almost like it's, it's like you want to control how you feel, so you want to get into something that you have control over, like one of these hookups or another quick relationship in order to make yourself feel better. What are your thoughts on this concept as a whole? I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> you know the saying, the best way to get over someone is to get under someone? So, <laughs> I think, uh, but I mean, I do think there are warnings that go with it, right? Yes, like, I think yes. if you are trying to, as Jeffrey was saying, I think if you're trying to sort of numb your pain or avoid your feelings, yeah. then, then maybe it's not the way to go. And, and I think for some people, it might make them feel worse. Uh, so you've got to just be aware of how it's making you feel. And if it's making you feel worse, then, then don't do it. But I think it can be just a really light-hearted, fun way to just get back out there again, feel attractive again, because that can often be yeah. quite hard after a breakup. Um, it's quite low stakes. You know that you're not, you, your heart's not really on the line. You're just having a bit of fun. I think that can be quite, quite good for, for moving on. Emphasis on fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be fun. Yeah. It's the fundamental exactly. of that thing. You know, you don't want to give yourself caught into slipping into another relationship very, very quickly. But Absolutely. I like your sentiments, and I hope that whoever's getting into that sort of thing to kind of heal is sort of making sure they temper that sort of emotional connection, you know, and just making sure they're going out with a, an open mind and some yeah. fun, which is yeah. so, so important. Thank you. I think that also now kind of begs the question, when is the, is there ever a right amount of time before you move on with someone? Psychologically, 18 months. Okay. So psychologists worked it out 18 months, but men are different. We just, we just go straight in. 18 minutes. <laughs> 18 minutes. <laughs> Seconds. Seconds. <laughs> That's the Shame. problem. W women take more time and they, they're more emotional about it and I've got to get over it and I've got to get, uh, you know, the mentally. Men, next weekend. Got to be. Otherwise, I don't feel like uh, I don't feel like a guy anymore. And and that's why men are getting into uh, into relationships so quickly. And you've got to be careful with the quickness getting into relationships because you can hurt somebody else. Mm. Yeah. They might not be in the same situation that you're in. Yes. They might be ready for this real relationship. They just meet somebody amazing now, and the other person's on a rebound. Mm. So j just be careful of the yeah. other person as well. You know what I mean? So uh, negotiate that situation. But men, unfortunately, we go straight in. We don't, uh, we don't wait 18 months. Okay. Ooh. Well, we have another voice note that we would love to share with you. This one's from Ronal. Let's take a listen. To survive a breakup, you need to be positive. You need to spend time with family and friends who uplift you. And you have to get, you can get yourself a new hobby as well. Something that you always wanted to do. And you need to pray. But first and foremost, when you want to move on after a breakup, you have to, to forgive that person. That's the only way you'll be able to move on. Yeah, you know, don't take anything, leave everything behind and start anew, start afresh. Wow. That is, that is one of the most powerful sort of statements, especially that forgiveness. Mm. Uh, because when something has happened, the blame goes all over the place until you kind of find a, a moment where you can say, this is how I'm going to deal with it. So when it comes to forgiveness, uh, it obviously starts with yourself. You know, Karen, I just wanted to, to ask you about this for a second, but just in terms of forgiving yourself for, you know, let's just say being duped, because sometimes people do that to you. Forgiving yourself for, for trusting somebody else uh, that forgiveness, you know, it's quite, it's quite powerful, you know. How long did it take you to, to do that after your breakup? It was probably like a year and eight months up to two years. I gave myself that time yes. mm, to go, like heal completely. And even after that, you're not healed completely, but you do need like a long period of time to heal. Yeah. So I gave myself like one to two years to, until I like moved on to something else, someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Forgiveness. <laughs> oh, this was a fun it conversation. Was. <laughs> Alistair, Karen, Jeffrey, thank you so much for joining us today. And you know, learning from 
your past relationships will definitely prepare you for a new relationship. Yeah. And even if that new relationship is with the new you, that will better fulfill your needs and help you to grow even more. Now, your growth will also make you a better partner in the long run. And when you are ready, be open to new experiences with someone new and really just enjoy the single phase, which is very important. Indeed, focus on yourself as well and even your own well-being. And I think the perfect person to show you about well-being is Ryle. Yes, Mzanzi, welcome back to it. Of course, as promised as well, we are about to test out this incredible new piece of equipment that almost seems to be doing everything when it comes to stimulating the body. So I've just got prepped up. I've got my shoes or my training socks on. They're called grip socks. I've got my water uh, bottle. Of course, you need to be hydrated and the towel because apparently we're going to be sweating. And uh, Beata, is that it? Do I have everything yeah, I need now? Everything is that. that. So we are good to go. All right. I can't so wait to show you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a mixture of nervous and excited, but I'm, no, I'm, I'm in good hands when it yeah. comes to you. So take me through this. What's the first okay, workout? Okay, so are we doing? you will start uh, facing the front. That means your hands on the front platform. Okay, yeah. hands on front, yeah. Your knees just behind the strap. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So you bring your hands one level down. All right. And then you push your bum down into more like we start in a modified plank position. You keep it okay, there. Okay, just like and that. Then you, yeah, and then you push it out for four counts. So push okay. out for one, two, three. Four and back in. Ah, oh, yeah, I can already see you shaking. Is the shaking normal? Yeah, is it supposed to that's happen? That's what you're aiming for. <laughs> so you keep your bum down here. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, shoulders in the sockets. And you keep going. So we try to really make no breaks. Normally, I would keep you here about a minute. So try to push out not too far. Yeah, you far, but I can see the shirt is shimmering. Ooh. That's perfect. I'm on so, my second rep and already the stimulation yeah. and the amount of uh, muscle control you need is incredible. Yeah, so Working we are overtime. shortly transitioning to the next exercise for a plank to pike. You're going to be on your toes okay. shortly. On my toes, so no break in between yeah, this. No right? break, so <laughs> on your toes, push it out. So normal okay. plank. So you bring your bum down first, you start in a plank. There we go. And then you pike it up slowly. So you pike your tailbone up. Yeah, perfect. Oh. Look to your toes and push it out slowly. And before carriage and platform touch, you stop. There you go, exactly. Tempo is perfect. You want to keep your shoulders, your wrists aligned. Amazing. Oh. Yeah, slow and controlled, that's what we want. So give me one or two more slow and controlled reps and then we're going for legs. For an elevator lunge, that means you're going to step with your left leg onto the front and right toe stay on the carriage. In five, in four, three, two, and one. Step the left foot forward, so no break. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> you can use the pole. Just put your fingers on top. <laughs> yeah, and then you start to lunge it down slowly. So you okay. lunge it down, one, two, three. Four, yeah, you aim for a 90 degree angle and then you push it up. One, two, three, four, and you wanna keep exactly like that. So micro bend in your knee, so you don't wanna lock the knee to keep the muscle under constant tension. Keep this leg a little bit more straight. And then you push your left heel, yes. Oh, now nice. I'm feeling it in this creature. Yeah. Whoa. I'm doing like two reps already, and it literally feels like I'm PBing. Yeah, the so normally, you, this exercise <sighs> we normally would do for two minutes. Okay, I can imagine two minutes of this can yeah. get you working so if out. We always say if you never have been on a mega form and you don't know how long a minute can be. <laughs> yeah, I must just say the rehab ability and potential of this is amazing. Yeah. The fact that you're forcing that muscular control, that stimulation, but also the eccentric load. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. perfect. If you're an athlete dealing with an injury, want to prevent injury, this is exactly what you want to be doing right now. Trust me, this is incredible stuff. Wow, the burn <laughs> is real. <laughs> I give you another option. So we're going for a plank to, uh, for a standing inner thigh. Sorry, so you're just giving me a short turn. Yes, okay. your legs almost straight. Right. And then you open up the carriage. For, so your legs stay almost straight, weight equally distributed, and then you just open. If possible, don't touch the pole. <laughs> Yeah, and then you bring it in by engaging your inner thighs Whoa, again. The burn! Yeah. <laughs> and also here, you always want to keep that little gap between carriage right. and platform. So Got we you. really want to fatigue the muscle. Sansa, let me tell you, I don't know if this looks easy to you, but it is not. This is proper. <laughs> I'm having fun, I'm concentrating, but at the same time, I'm feeling muscles that I've never felt in years, getting stimulated, getting woken up, and getting brought to life. I can imagine after a full session of this, you're going to feel like you've worked out. Yeah, yeah let me tell definitely. you. Definitely. Woo, almost lost a bit. <laughs> so we have oh, a spring change then coming up. Just keep All going, right. yeah. Okay. 
So as I said, we don't want any break. So as an instructor, I'm telling you what happens next. So you will kneel down on your carriage and we have a spring change for donkey kicks. Okay. So just kneel down and then you can also easily change the spring. You pull one black spring in. One black spring And another up. white one. Okay. Yeah. That wasn't uh, actually hard at all. That was pretty easy. Yeah. And that changes the resistance of the That machine. changes the resistance. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Staying on my knees? You stay on your knees. You bring your hands onto the edge of your carriage and your right heel at the curvy handlebar. Oh, yeah. Exactly like okay. that. And then you try to push out from your heel only out for one, two, Ooh. three, four. Yeah. Ooh. Keep a little micro bend and back in. So you want to keep your hips and your shoulders square. Perfect. Yes. There you go. Oh. Amazing. So also here you have the possibility to adjust the resistance. If it's way too hard, we usually stay here for two minutes. Then you have the option to take one spring down. Oh. So form comes always first, but I see you have having a hard time. <laughs> but form is great, so just keep going. Oh, I'm telling you, just keeping the correct position, it's not only the glute that I'm working in the hamstring, yeah. but the entire core, just to kind of keep this position that I'm in. Oh, the body is working we over time. We're changing up the angle a little bit. You're going to lay down on your side oh. in three, two, one. Just lay down on the carriage. Okay, on my side. On, like the, that. Si on the side. Like Heel this. back on the curvy handlebar. On this one? Yeah. So okay. your upper body can relax, and then you just push it out again. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Nice. Oh, Mzanzi, let me tell you, this is absolute exceptional stuff. I'm going through the paces right now. The mega former is just exceptional. The body has feel, well, it's feeling muscles that have never worked in years and I'm getting started. But you can see started. this is the perfect oh. uh, range of motion. So you want to keep that micro bend. So if you would lock the knee, then you would give the muscle a break. Okay. And we really want to work. So we work normally legs around about eight minutes, only one side. So Absolutely normally you said only right leg for around about seven, eight, nine minutes, and depends on the routine. So right. that you really fatigue the muscle that it starts to <sighs> shake and that's where the magic happens. Okay, you heard a Beata's coming at me right now and there's no breaks needed, but you get a break right now while I carry on with this Mzanzi. We've got one more session coming at you. We're gonna show you more of what this incredible machine can do. So don't go anywhere. Mm, the burn is real. Ah! <laughs> Peter Glucken. Hello, do you know what Peter Glucken is? What is Peter Glucken? No one knows what Peter Glucken is. Peter Glucken is a natural fiber in jungle oats that helps lower cholesterol and keep hearts well. Jungle, do life with heart.
welcome back, you beautiful souls. We're going to be delving into our weekend sport in just a moment. Of course, both the Bulls and the Stormers victorious in their respective semi-finals to ensure an all-South African final in the URC. We'll delve into that in just a moment right now. Let's bring you up to speed with those news headlines. Thanks a lot, G. Let's take a peek at the news headlines for you. The Nelson Mandela Bay Metro says a number of interventions are in place to maintain water supply. Taps are fast running dry in the metro. This after the municipality's maintenance team had discovered that water could no longer be extracted from the Impofu Dam due to low water levels. At least 30 suburbs are affected. Residents have been urged to use water sparingly. The metro's spokesperson, Mtuba Banzi Amniki, says water tankers will be deployed to the affected areas. Now, the homes of at least five families were gutted by a devastating fire that ripped through houses in the Silver Wormclough Road close to the Helderberg Nature Reserve in Somerset West over the weekend. Residents described the fire as devastating. It started on the slopes of Lodensford Estate on Wednesday and spread as winds picked up. A total of 24 firefighting appliances and some 100 firefighters fought the flames. Two firefighters were injured and animals had to be evacuated. Air support was also waterbombing the fire. On to international news, Russia and China have opened a new cross-border bridge in the Far East that uh, they will hope uh, further strengthen trade as Moscow reels from sweeping Western sanctions imposed over its invasion of Ukraine. The bridge linking the Russian city of uh, Blagovishnik in, and to the Chinese city of Heihe uh, across the Amur River is about one kilometer long and cost uh, some $342 million amid a giant fireworks display. Uh, freight trucks from both ends cross the two-lane bridge festooned with flags in the colors of both countries. Now, an overloaded ship crammed with thousands of sheep capsized yesterday off Sudan's Red Sea coast, uh, dr drowning uh, the animals on board, but with all crew members surviving. Now, the livestock vessel was heading from Sudan's port of uh, Suakin to Saudi Arabia when it ran into trouble in the Red Sea. A senior Sudanese uh, port official said it was carrying some 15,800 sheep, which was way beyond its load limits. Another official who said that all crew were rescued raised concerns of the economic and environmental impact of this particular tragedy. Now, popular South African singer Lira has confirmed that she is doing well and recovering two months after having a stroke. Uh, Lira shared her health update on social media after it was announced that she had been nominated for a South African music award known as a Sama. She said she's very well and slowly, slowly recovering after suffering the stroke in Germany. She's been nominated in the Best Remix of the Year category for a collaboration with DJ Maporisa uh, for a song Feel Good. At the time of a stroke, Lira's team confirmed that her ability to communicate, particularly her speech, had been impacted and that she was undergoing treatment. Early last month, Lira announced that the stroke had, and I quote, unfortunately affected my speech. However, I am making lots of progress every day. I will be taking some time to focus on my recovery. We wish her the best of luck and a rapid recovery. You're a true talent, Lira, and we are here for you. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show, and time for your sporting details. Chi is standing by. Uh, thank you so much, Carl, echoing what he said, certainly sending all of our love and positive energy to Lira this morning. But let's kick off our sport once again. And on the perfect note, from a South African perspective, as Heinrich Klaassen powered South Africa to a four-wicket victory with a match-winning 81 in that second uh, T20 against India in Kentucky yesterday. And the Proteas, they now lead the five-match series 2-0. Klaassen was back to his brilliant best after only returning to the Proteas starting 11 due to Quinton de Kock's injured finger. And was an inning South Africa definitely required after Bhuvaneshwar Kumar showed off all of his class and experience to truly rock South Africa's chase with four wickets. But then class and Temba Bavuma put on 64 for the fourth wicket to steady the ship for the visitors before David Miller did what he does best and he chipped in with 20 not out to finish the innings off. Then, of course, we'll be delving into the URC, those semi-finals in just a moment. But when we look at the knock-on effect, Springbok coach Jacques Ninema has an announced a 43-man squad on Saturday for the international season ahead and the season will feature the July series against Wales, the Rugby Championship of course and then that year-end tour which will likely include three SAA games and of course the Stormers and the Bulls in the final of the URC comes as no surprise to see a number of their players in that squad. So the Cape side are represented by Evan Ruiz, finally got his call-up, Dion Fari and Warwick Halant who's been brilliant all season, Salman Murat, Marvin Oris, Stephen Kitsoff, 
France Malherbe, Herschel Yankees and Damien Willems, Marcel Kutsia and Al Glo, Ruan Nokia and Kurtley Aronsa. They'll be the Bulls representatives. There are also eight uncapped players in the squad. Very exciting, including Ruth, Lo Nokia, Murat Fari Aronsa, Scrum Half Grant Williams, and then of course another massive find this season prop to Keko, Tutulko, Mchunu, rather, and yeah, certainly has put his hand up this season. Then we move back onto the track, onto four wheels, and uh, Formula One world champion Max Verstappen. He led a Red Bull 1 2 in yesterday's Azerbaijan Grand Prix after pole sitter Charles Leclerc and Ferrari endured another dose of misery with a double retirement. Sergio Perez had jumped Leclerc to the first turn before Verstappen took control as the Ferraris of both Carlos Saints and then Leclerc returned with engine problems. George Russell then took third ahead of teammate Lewis Hamilton, who needed a helping elbow to climb out of his cockpit. Such was the state of his back after an afternoon being jolted around, uh, bouncing in his car. And Verstappen's uh, fifth win of the season and the 25th of his career has now tightened his grip on the driver's standings, with uh, Perez moving into second, 21 points behind, while Leclerc has now slipped 34 points adrift. Then it was a massive gamble for a number of these golfers who have now been banned from the PGA, but it seems to have paid off. South Africa's Charles Schwarzel held off compatriot Henny Duplessis to claim the biggest paycheck in golfing history at the opening event of the Live Invitational Series. So the 37-year-old, led by three strokes going into that third and final round at the Centurion course north of London, and consolidated with a round of 72 to seal the $4 million prize purse. Schwarzel, whose previous highest paid check was a $1.4 million that he scooped for winning the 2011 Masters, ended up on seven under par with Duplessis finishing one stroke uh, behind him, then another South African, Brandon Grace. He finished third on five under, all three playing for the Stingers team, who easily won the team event of the brand new series. But again, I reiterate, watch this space. Uh, I think a few more golfers might follow suit soon, but that's where we leave those sporting details we'll talk Talk you see in just a moment after the weather. Thank you very much, Graham. A look at your weather. Now, out in the Philippines, a volcano has spewed a huge column of ash into the sky yesterday, blanketing a region still recovering from last week's eruption. The blast from the Bulisan volcano lasted 18 minutes, and the Philippine Seismological Agency said impairing road visibility and forcing airlines to cancel flights. On the 5th of June, Mount Bulisan sent a grey plume shooting up at least one kilometre and covered 10 villages with ash. And residents of Juban town in Sosogon uh, province, still reeling from last week's eruption, were woken yesterday by the volcano's thundering. No casualties were reported, but the seismological agency raised the alert level on the five-level system. Emergency workers were deployed to clean ash-laden roads and guide drivers struggling to see oncoming vehicles. The Philippines is located in the seismic, uh, seism, seism, please, excuse me, active so-called Pacific Ring of Fire and has over 20 active volcanoes. Now, from Ashfield skies to beautiful sunrise views, thank you so much for sharing those pictures with us. Seven o'clock, we have this uh, beautiful picture coming through from Clive Payne, out here in the mother city, Cape Town. He captured this beautiful shot of the orange and pink sky reflecting in the body of water surrounding the rigs. It's beautiful. And then we have this beautiful one from Debbie Drahota out in Marina Beach, out in KZN, with pink views beautifully highlighting the palm trees. Take a look at that please don't forget if you would like to share your sunrise images with us simply do send them through to us on our whatsapp line and that number is 063-408-8863 and now we take a look at your temperatures starting off with you Pulukwani, your low today is four reaching a high of 23 uh, if you're out in the bombella sun and clouds for you eight your minimum reaching a maximum of 28. pretoria sunny times for you that's the capital city seven that's where you start off you will peak at 20 with johannesburg coming in at a low of 5, reaching highs of 18. Mahikeng, sun and clouds for you today. 7, reaching a maximum of 21, with Clagstop coming in at 6 and 22. Sun and clouds for Kimberley, 11. That's your low, reaching a high of 22. 
with Bloemfontein starting off at a low of 5, peaking at that maximum of 20. Richards Bay, 11 and 28. Via Art in Peter Maritzburg, 9 is your low, reaching a maximum of 27. The warmest place to be, Durban, 16, your minimum, reaching a maximum of 25. With Mtata coming in with some sun and clouds today, 10, peaking at 25. East London, 19 and 28. Craddock, 11, reaching max of 23. Kabecha, GQ, 14 and 26. If you're out in George, 12 is your minimum today, reaching a maximum of 23. Rainy times for Cape Town. Brace yourselves, 99% out there. 12, reaching a high of 17. With Booster coming in with uh, plenty rain as well, 90%. 9, reaching a maximum of 17. It's cloudy out in Sutherland 3, peaking at 13 with Uppington last. Certainly not least, coming in with some sun and clouds today. 9 is your low, reaching a high of 26. Well, that's what it's looking like today. It's the start of a brand new week, and I know no matter what the weather's like in your part of the country, you are going to make it a feel-good day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Tabiso. Now, the thing is, you saw rain in certain parts of South Africa. We're about to get rained on by some talent. Okay, this is what we love to bring to you on a Monday. And we do have a band called The Fantastics to introduce you to. Now, we have the band manager standing by, but to give you an idea of where The Fantastics are from, they're from an area in Cape Town that, you know, historically has been riddled with, you know, drugs, gangsterism, all these things that could be influences on young people. However, this band manager decided to start something that was literally fantastic. Fantastic. An opportunity to get people not making war, but making music. And that's what the Fantastics are all about. I cannot wait to get a little deeper with the band manager, Jordan Watt. Yes, sir. How's it, man? Yeah. I'm warm, man. It's well, nice being on the couch. Good. Yes, this is, this is the feel of the couch. You feel yeah, how comfortable man, it's it is. good. Hey, it's nice. <laughs> We actually warmed it up on that spot for oh, you. Oh, wow. That's how I'm it goes. honored, man. Thank you, man. So, co well, congratulations on starting this band. I love what's behind the band, which is actually a lot of spirit, a lot of music, which is what we want to focus on. You know, you want to make sure the focus is there. Uh, but I just want to start off straight up. The idea to start a band called The Fantastics, where did that come from? It just came naturally, man, and organically. Like I said in the um, last time that the guys yeah. just decided to jam out and um, yeah, we took it further yes. and decided to start a band. So, but I mean, this, this happened in school, right? Yes, yes. And, and so when you're in school, you're trying to get through, you know, your exams and you're starting a band at the same time. So, and, and obviously everybody's got their own vibe at school. Yes. You know, everybody's got their own clique or whatever. Uh, how is the dynamic in the group between all of you from different sort of backgrounds and, and circumstances? Like, how, how was it clicking together? Okay, two of them, the band guys, um, is currently um, one of them, the guitarist, yes. he is employed and the vocalist is studying nice. at Higge Nuit in Wellington. Beautiful. Um, and the four remaining of us are still in high school, so yeah. yeah. That's great, man. I actually want to see them. I think it's important because I know you're the band manager, yes. but I wish we had, you know, all of them around, but I can still actually see them. So okay, cool. let's take a look at these good looking people. That's the Fantastics right there. Hey, they all got lovely pants. Have you noticed that? <laughs> all of your band members, is that a thing? The pants. I think so. Yes, right? It stands out more. It, it does, eh? Because you know you've got the black tees, but then you've got the fancy pants. Yes. I like that. It's important. But uh, let's continue with the, this band's journey. Okay, cool. Because now you've got some of them outside of school, and then you said four still in school. Yes. Does that not change the dynamic of the band? Because, you know, some of them maybe not be as readily available for practice as the four that's in school. Yeah. How do you manage that? Man, it's, um, it's schooling is demanding, it so is. <laughs> we have to put school first, and... It's it's very difficult to like work around it. Yeah. So yeah, man. Okay. We struggle to even rehearse and so on. So what school we put first? School we put first. Yes. I feel like it's important for you to say that national TV. I love the fact that you said that. <laughs> put school first. No, it's I, I I love that. I really enjoy that. And I mean, you guys are a young band. Started in 2018. You're still doing your thing. You're still starting off. But here's the thing, uh, the future of the band. You know, where do you want this to go? And and the band's purpose for the community. You're from Bontieville in Cape Town. So, you know, what do you want this band to mean to your community? And where do you want the band to go? Okay, we are a, a cover band. We play cover cover yes. versions. So hopefully, um, sometime some raw original material. Yeah. In Correct. the near future. That's pr yeah, and then also inspiring. Yes, too. that's it. Yeah, so I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. When when somebody from your community sees you guys on Expresso, what do you want that to mean to them? Don't look at us. Look at the inner and the the, the deeper version of it. Yes. 
So, yeah, inspiring others out there. I like that, man. Focus on the talent that's within. Yes. Because I think that your circumstances can tell you one thing, but that's not all of you. I think that your drive is how fantastic you perceive yourself. Yes. You know? And I think that's what your band is all about, which is great. So I'm looking forward to some original music coming from the Fantastics. They've got a couple of performances from these passionate musicians coming up. And I want to see them again in their pants because they are ready to rock your pants all the way through on your Feel Good Breakfast show. If you can look at them right now, look at that. You see, they will be on your screens very, very soon. Three performances <laughs> on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Keep waving! <laughs> You'll always know how much I love you. I hope that you never stop learning and growing. That you'll be brave and joyful and kind. And that one day, when you look at me and I look at you, we'll love the wonderful you that you've become. It all begins with purity. They said it couldn't happen. In fact, the whole world said we wouldn't see two South African sides in the final of the United Rugby Championship. But they are here, and we brought in yep. the experts to chat about it. The Bulls and the Stormers, they had it in their hands to make it an all-South African affair in the first ever URC final when they took on the toughest opposition from Ireland in the form of Leinster and Ulster, respectively. And they did just that with stellar performances against world-class opposition. And with us to preview the action is sports producer and anchor Michael Pedro and a player who just stepped off the peel field. Uh, Mr. Carl Wastey, how did it go out there? Oh, yeah, well, uh, you know, the guys, they uh, lifted out there. We, we played, uh, you know, we had a couple of problems with the breakdown, but then we, you know, we fixed it up here and there. Uh, I just think it was a, a great result for the team. And just uh, thanks a lot to the faithful who are here today. I uh, really appreciate it, guys. And uh, we'll be in the final, so we can do it. Push on. Oh, 110%. Yeah, eh? 110%. 110%. Yeah. The, the team that scored the more, most points won the game. I mean, friend. that's usually how it goes. <laughs> that, yes. <laughs> that's it. We joke about it, but if you were a fan who was there at the stadium, oh, my word. Cape Town Stadium for sure, but if you were abroad and a Safa abroad there, Ooh. to see Leinster be downed by the Bulls, this is, this is quite momentous stuff. We yeah. held very little hope at the beginning of the season. Certainly about a month or two into it, we thought, OK, this is a foregone conclusion. They've done it. Let's start with the Stormers. The pressure on Marnie Lebock. I hadn't had the best day with the boots. Yeah. 
So that man had to step up the BMT rank through. How did the Stormers pull this one off, man? I don't even think they know, to be honest, because <laughs> it was it was that kind of game. I mean, I was at the stadium, and just the yeah. look of intensity on everybody's face when he was lining up that final kick, they almost couldn't bear to watch. Uh, and the fact that it just, 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 just snuck in that right hand yeah. upright, I think it was indicative of how the whole game went, really. You never knew yeah. which team was going to take control of the game, which team was going to come out on top. Obviously, the Stormers had that red card in the last 10 minutes of play, uh, and that sort of, you felt, would swing the game in Ulster's advantage. But the Stormers, with the home crowd, and obviously with the drive to try and match what the Bulls had done in Leinster on Friday, uh, somehow got over the line, and now they're in the final. Um, well, let's have a look there at one of those pivotal moments, and that, that exact second, in fact, that Marnie Leboc had to step up. Take a look at this. One kick will decide for now. Should he miss, it's extra time. He's now. He's missed it. He's, he's, got, he's got it. Oh! He's must have sneaked just inside the post. Oh my goodness, what a climax here in Cape Town. The ball wavered through the air. It looked like it was going wide. It looked like it was going to hit the post. But in the end, it just drifts inside. That right hand upright. And the Stormers are into the final. The first year of this URC. And it's all South Africa. Stormers against the Bulls. Right here next week. Final score, Stormers 17. Ulster 15. Oh, wow. Well, through the air. <laughs> through the air <laughs> out there. That reminds me of something, you know? Air. You know the way they, they won at the death? You know, it reminded me of a, a football team that do, does something very oh. similar in the Champions League. Um, I don't want to... Uh, 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 no, 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 stay, stay, stay. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it, was, it was incredible. And I know that the Bulls did a very similar, similar thing with regard to edging out. Um, and, and we kind of expect that, though, from yeah. the Bulls. And, yeah. and it speaks to this narrative now of a Bulls Stormers final. We want to say, looking at that Springbok team, you want to say the Stormers are a shoe in for this, but I don't know. The Bulls, they yeah. just do it when it matters. I mean, to go to Leinster yeah. and beat them in their own backyard, I think I saw something where they've only, before this Bulls game, Leicester had only lost 21 of 225 matches at home. Sure. In knockout stages of competitions. So for the Bulls to make it 22, I mean, is just amazing. Uh, the fact that they hung on at the end as well, a lot. The contrast between the Bulls' performance and the Stormers is there for everyone to see. I mean, the Stormers had to come back. The Bulls had to hold on. Yeah. That final 10 minutes was just an onslaught from Leinster. Uh, and the fact that they were able to hold on and and get the win, I think, is is amazing. It's absolutely... The Bulls were 15th on the table in December. Yeah. And now they're in the final. The Stormers were also in the bottom, in the bottom half of the table for most of the season until the turn of the year. So for these two teams to have put together the runs that they've, they've put together and make it to the final, playing it in South Africa as well, it's amazing for SA Rugby, it's amazing for the respective teams, uh, and it really puts a stamp on how good South African teams are. Completely, and for the 10 uncapped players making it into the Springbok <laughs> squad, yes. it speaks volumes as well. Senator Timber weighed in on the conversation as well. He left us this voice note. Let's hear what they have to say. And yeah, yeah, it was tough, it was <laughs> tough. Even though I am a bold supporter, even though I feel that the ref was a little bit unfair to us, especially so in the first half uh, when we were uh, on the stramage. So it was tough, man. I uh, also expecting a nail biting final. I'm damn by in Cape Town. I, I do. He just he just drifted away. Yeah, no, but he was just like, yeah. Uh, just that's more than him. Okay. The days from uh, one one word. Bulls province. Storm is going to take it or bulls. Stormers. Wow.
I'm going to say Stormers, even though I know the city is going to split, be split between southern <laughs> suburbs and northern suburbs. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> so let's be honest. So I, I think it's going to be a great game, but I think Stormers discipline-wise at the lineouts, mm. I feel like they need to, to brush up on certain areas over there if they are going to you know, beat the Bulls, because I think that Jake White knows how to exploit yeah. uh, a gap with regard to discipline, in, especially at the breakdown. So I'm going to really say, if we can polish up just a little bit this week, Storm has got it. Home ground advantage as well. Oh, man, I'm going to say Real Madrid. <laughs> yeah, so, man, they're going to take it. Um, oh, brilliant stuff for South African teams in the final of the United <laughs> Rugby Championship. Let's all pick it in just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, Mzanzi, we're back one last time out here at Leopard Legree, and Beata has been taking me through my paces, just showing me a little bit of the plethora of exercises that you can do with this machine. But we've got one more session. She's going to be switching things up a bit, so we're working on a little bit of the lower body and some of the core. I think we're going to take it to the top now, so without further ado, let us enjoy this one more time and take on the challenge. Beata, yeah, what do you got for us? Yeah, upper body is next. <laughs> so I have inserted already three white springs okay. to start with. You can always add more, but let's just take it not too hard. Yeah, yeah, I think after those first few exercises, yeah. I realized that it's not about anything other than quality. So exactly. I don't need a lot of springs, and I'm exactly. definitely still getting yeah. a good workout on. So kneel down on the carriage okay. for me. And then you're grabbing your long cables. You grab the handles. Okay, got the handles. And yeah. we're going for a classic bicep curl. So you extend your arms just like that. Okay. And then you slowly bend it in for about 90 degrees. Ah. And then you extend it back. Yes, I can see the bicep pop in. Nice. Also, don't forget to keep your core engaged that you don't lean back. So you never want to use Swing, any momentum. Yeah. yeah. Perfect, Ooh, that's it. The isolation yeah. of this one is so real. So you're working on that like 90 degree <sighs> to keep the muscle under constant tension. What I was we thinking to for. myself that all these exercises were all crazy elaborate movements, but I think for the conventional gymmer and yeah. the bodybuilder, they're going to love seeing the fact that they can also do isolation work and isolation exercises on this machine. And I mean, like you said, we're only just literally touching the surface of what you can do. But I'm Zanzi, I'm telling you, anybody, whether you're an athlete, whether you're someone just starting out in the game, there is something for you to do on this and something for you to definitely benefit on. And the nice thing, yeah. you know, you can always make it harder you can either <laughs> go slower so Sebastian sometimes says if you do like three reps in a minute you need about like 20 seconds for one rep. So yeah. the slower you go, the better it is. I'm definitely feeling that. I mean, I come from this perspective of just move the weight as quick as you can. Yeah. But doing this, it's enforcing that mind-muscle yeah. connection. And exactly. I'm feeling that stimulation yeah. so well. What else you got for me? So you come onto your knees for okay. me and we go for chest opener. So you chest notice openers. every exercise is a name. So yeah. you start with your thumbs next to your thighs. Okay. And then you only want to push your straight arms back. Oh, yes. Nice. Yeah. And then you stop when your thumbs are again next to your thighs. That's it. So only back, arms straight. Yeah. Ooh. You keep shoulders down and away from your ears. Perfect. So tempo is perfect. So you just want to push back as far as you can. Yes. Ooh. So upper body, normally we do every exercise a minute. And you can always add a little bit more, a little bit less. I can imagine a minute of this. And again, like I said, the quality over quantity here is what stands out for me. Because yeah, a lot of the time in the gym, you're doing an upper body exercise. How yeah. often do you engage your core? Every exactly. movement, I you feel like You have to. If core... you don't engage your core, you fall off. Yeah, <laughs> you even the balance. pelvic girdle is coming yeah. into play here. So yeah. everything on the body coming into work, which is getting me that extra bang for my yeah. buck. It means I'm essentially burning more calories at the same time, right? Yeah. So cool. as a, what is even nicer to know you burn up up to 48 hours after the workout so there are studies nice. that's the so-called afterburn effect or more so, scientifically epoch okay so that means your muscle needs more energy by exhausting the muscle your muscle needs more oxygen to recover and that's what gives the afterburn oh, effect that so you burn after even a session with you guys i go home while i'm eating dinner i'm still burning exactly i love it i yeah. love it well, let's and keep you will the burning realize going. you will realize that even often after the second day the soreness kicks in even more oh dear okay so well i think in two days time i'm gonna feel it but for now let's carry on with yeah. this workout because i'm loving these exercises cross your cables cross the cables okay tuck your elbows in yeah. And then you're welcome to sit down or keep your bum lifted. That is okay. up to you. And then you just open and close. Oh, like nice. Like reading a, a newspaper. Yeah. yeah, a lot of like rotator cuffs, shoulders. Oh, oh, oh. That's why we call it the newspaper because the 
movement is like this reading is a newspaper. About two years ago, I literally dislocated my shoulder, and a lot of the rehab involved movements like this, but I would have to go to a special place to do that. The yeah. fact that you can do all this on this machine, not only your strength work, but your rehab and prehab work, I think athletes are going to love this. I yeah. think anybody that's an enthusiast that's maybe injured themselves, this is a great way to get your strength back. And on top of that, just to have some fun. I mean, imagine in a class environment, everybody yeah. pushing it out together for a minute. So, and we also have like <laughs> a pump pumping motivation motivating music, the instructor has a mic to talk, and so that's a class environment. It's, it's very a vibe, fun. and yeah. I remember you got this view, looking at oh. Lion's Head, I can see the ocean in the background. I could get used to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, okay, loving this one. You got anything more for us before you go? Yeah, just drop the cables. Okay. Um, you can lay down on your, on your belly. On my belly, and yeah. And insert, I would say, at least one more wide spring. Okay, we're stepping it up now. Yeah, and then you push yourself to the back, and grab the high handlebars. So you let your elbows point to the side at about shoulder level, yeah. and then you pull yourself to the back oh. and let it go out again. And also here, yeah, perfect. Tempo is perfect, so the slower you go, the better oh. it is. So you really try to engage your lats to work between your shoulder blades. Oh, also the here, lats are burning. Yeah, Ooh. perfect. So also when you extend it out, try to not lock the elbow completely. Also here, if you keep that micro bend, that means your muscles are constantly working. <sighs> also here, you can engage your core. Yeah, suck the belly button to the spine. <sighs> Perfect. So we want a slow and continuous movements to really exhaust the muscle, to really make it burn. Embrace the burn. <laughs> <laughs> Feel the burn. Be one with the burn. Oh, Beata, I'm definitely feeling the burn. And I'm also loving the fact that you can also do these conventional exercises yeah. that you get in the gym, along with all the elaborate work that really just exactly. completes what I feel is a full balanced workout. I mean, for the body to get stimulated in so many ways, so many different angles. And like you said, we literally are just touching the surface. I feel like there's thousands of the more movements The possibilities are through. almost endless. So, yeah. wow, I gotta say thank you for this. I feel like I've been educated so on something that I've never even known Amazing. before. And I'm thinking, to myself, where have you been all my life? I've needed this, yeah. and I'm definitely going to incorporate this into my training. I've well done. World, thank you. <laughs> I've got world champs coming up in a few months, so I'm definitely going to start working out on this because I think it's going to benefit we me. We are here for you. Seven days a week, so oh, no excuses. Yes. <laughs> Zanzi, you heard it. You know where to find them, of course. Leopard Legree out here at Point Mall. Beata, you've been incredible. I hope thank to you have so some much. more classes with you yeah. and join the rest Can't of the wait. crew. And Mzanzi, you need to do the exact same thing. It's a <laughs> load of fun whether you're starting out on your workout journey or you're looking to get that extra extra edge, it doesn't matter. Everything that you want to benefit from comes from this incredible machine right here. So what are you waiting for? Go book your spot. All right, we're gonna finish up this workout. Let's go, one more round. Yeah, you got perfect, this. All right. whenever <laughs> you're ready. Yeah. Oh, and tea is served. Welcome back to it, your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express or Live here on S3 as we start a brand new week. And we're all really about radiating positive energy this Monday morning. So it's time for our dose of positivity.
tea. Brought to you by Five Roses. And today we're focusing on how easy it can be to impact others and how others see the world. You know, whether it's over a cup of Five Roses tea or dedicating time to teaching underprivileged children about the ocean like our next guest, CEO of Black Mermaid Foundation, Zandi Lenzov, who is promoting diversity in the most beautiful way. She's doing this in diving and ocean spaces. One deep dive at a time. Zandi, I mean, honestly, the Black Mermaid is in the house. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me. I'm good. I'm very good. Really, really fantastic. Thank you so much for bringing some uh, really, really awesome tea along with you. But let's talk about what you do. Deep diving, Zandi, where did your passion for that begin? It started in 2016. I find myself in Bali. I go on my first ever snorkel trip and I fall in love, head over heels, and that was the end of it for me. Wait, you left the country, you went on a holiday, <laughs> you were doing a snorkeling activity and then you found a career there. I fell in love. I knew that I had to live there and figure out how, how to make it work. This is incredible because not only did you then find your passion for that, I think that what you've been able to do is to translate that passion into, uh, you know, something of a, an inspiring story. You know, you believe that uh, you can be the change that you want to see. And so you moved from building a career out of this, but to really just inspiring young underprivileged children uh, to find a passion in that as well. Tell me more about that. 100%. So to see the ocean for the first time, to just see beneath the surface for the first time at 28 years old, I knew that I wanted to make that come earlier for little people, yeah. right? 28 years old is just a little bit later. And I knew that in making the ocean space more accessible, all it meant was that there'd be an expansion of the worlds in which we live, an expansion in the careers that we think we can have. Yeah. But most importantly, just to be able to, to really witness the incredible world that lives under there. Uh, but also to see, I think, the expressions and the reactions of these young people when they then get to explore that, when they get to really experience that, right? Which is the aim of your organization. I know that inclusivity and positivity, we know, they go hand in hand. Yes. But what is the aim of your organization? The aim is to create diverse representation in ocean spaces. Uh. I want everybody to believe that they belong in the ocean space. Uh, and if you belong somewhere and you feel a connection to a place, mm, then you will protect it. You, look you know, there's it. so much there. Yeah. And, um, and it helps us to change the narratives that we have around the ocean. Mm. I mean, we grow up being very afraid of deep waters. And it's an incredible opportunity to create the diversity that allows us to change narratives. I love that. But you're changing narratives over here, over there, <laughs> and everywhere. <laughs> I mean, you're the country's first qualified black free diving instructor. How do you feel that that uh, positively impacts uh, the lives of those who get to experience and witness your story? Wow, I think it's just an incredible um, way in which we realize that we can always dream, mm. regardless of where you come from. I mean, mm -hmm. I grew up in Soweto, and this girl from Soweto living in the ocean, madly living as a mermaid, it just reminds us that anything is possible, and I think it's, it's no matter where you come from, it's never wow. too late to start. Ah, from not even Sabo swimming pool <laughs> to Oceana. I love it. Uh, Zandi, you are absolutely inspiring. Thank you so, so much for doing the work that, that you do. You connect so beautifully with the people out there who look up to you. But I think that mm -hmm. this story is certainly an inspiring one for so many South Africans who are watching this right now uh, and looking for just that extra bit of positivity. Uh, and I think the bottom line is that uh, nothing that we set our minds to is impossible to achieve. Thank you so much. So, okay, nothing like a good dose of positivity to kickstart your week. Stand the chance now, okay, to win one of three Five Roses hampers to the value of 300 Rand. All you have to do is reply to the competition post on the Expresso Facebook or Twitter page and tell us how you spread positive tea to those around you. And don't forget to include hashtag Five Roses X Positive Tea. The competition closes on the 27th of June. T's and C's, you can find them on expressoshow.com. We'll drink to that. Mm. Yes, Queen. Mm. Because nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses. Oh, well, listen, we are back in studio with the Fantastics, the band, and they are here in studio to make sure your week is starting off on the right mood and tone. And here is their first performance on your Feel Good Breakfast show. This is Rihanna's Love on the Brain. Take it away. Bye. 
Just to get close to you, gonna burn something, babe. And I walk for miles just to get a taste. Just to get the on your Feel Good Breakfast show. What a phenomenal Woo! performance. That was incredible. We can't wait to get more from them, so stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast show.
Yes, welcome back. Time to talk more celebratory sport. The Proteas are back in action against India in a five-match series. And they're dominating already. The Proteas are in that five-match T20 series, in fact, up against our old foes, India. Arguably one of the best teams in the world in the shortest format. And having won the first game with a record run chase, in fact, South Africa followed that up with a four-wicket victory in that second game. With us to uh, chat about all of the action on and off the field is our sports anchor, Michael Pedro, and a former captain who I think has spent many times in that victory march around the field. How are you feeling about the game? Yeah, well, uh, you know, the game was good. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, well. We, we did our well. We, we did what we could. The bat is batted, the field is fielded, and the boat is bolted. <laughs> yeah, well. Um, and, and at the end of the day, the team that scored the most runs won, won, won the, the game. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's usually how it goes. That's I feel like this is our intro for <laughs> all the sports. Unless you're Quentin de Kock, in which you just, just keep it simple. Yeah, you just, that's it. That's it. Uh, I love it. Lots to say, in fact, yeah. about this one, which we love up against, I, I say, arguably the best team in the world. You've got to say, in the rhythm of T20, coming out of an eye. PL, India are probably the best T20 team in yeah. the world. Yes. Yeah? And I mean, they've got a lot of new players in the Indian setup, but no strangers to the IPL. I mean, it's like, a, it's like an Indian all-star 11 yeah. from the yeah. IPL. It's a, well, basically. it's the talent factory, and this is yeah. why they designed that league, and it's producing, but they didn't produce on yeah. the day. Um, let's start with our, our victory run chase. I want to mm. talk about David Miller, because we're talking about him so much, because he is so key to this T20 setup. Yes, it's important for him to score runs and get a, a great performance in, but how important to the team dynamic is this man firing, whether it's 20 at the back end, like in the last match, yes. or a 50 in the middle order? Yeah. Yeah, I think in that middle order he is so crucial because if he comes in towards the back end and only has a couple of overs to get his iron and try and finish the game off or post a, a big total, help us post a big total, he is that guy. He can also come in closer to the beginning of the innings, work his way into an innings, get the ones and twos, rotate strike and occasionally hit the ball over the boundary, which he does <laughs> quite regularly. Um, so I think he, he he's obviously also the most experienced T20 player that we have there. We also have a lot of youngsters coming through uh, and inexperienced guys at this level. Um, so to have somebody like him in the middle order who's been there and done it, I mean, he was amazing in the IPL winning uh, with the Gujarat yeah. Titans in their very first season and he's just carried on that form uh, into that first game and also yesterday as well. Uh, let's not underestimate the, the little knock of 20 that he put together yesterday. Yeah, steps up when you need him. This is why the IPL spends so much money on South African players, because David Miller is a, is a testament to that. Uh, in the, the post-match interview after that final, the IPL, he just said, I'm going to hit the ball as hard as I can. So I feel like David Miller is the guy who loves the thrill of the chase. Yeah. This is why he doesn't want to go up any, any sort of further up the order. He loves that chase. I feel like he loves those times where he has the to be BMT, brought in yeah. as a bit of a rescue mission, and he chases after it. It's fantastic. But of course, I feel like he was overshadowed by another gentleman that I feel like you're going to talk about soon, which is <laughs> Mr. Heinrich Klaassen. Um, unbelievable. <laughs> and to, to, to think that he was a step in, a stand in for Quinton de Kock, who we thought, not again, we need Quinny. We do. Yeah. He is vital. His yeah. batting is just sublime at the moment. He yeah. proved that again in the IPL. Hey, Klaassen stepped in, and it looked like he had been playing at the yeah. top flight for the last six months. His radar is in, man. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things where everybody sort of has their favorite opposition. <laughs> uh, for JP Dumini, Australia. <laughs> if you need someone to step up in Australia, it's JP Dumini. Yeah. If you need someone to step up against India, at the moment, it's Heinrich Klaassen. <laughs> awesome, because, yeah. as you say, coming from pretty much nowhere, he didn't really, hasn't really played a lot of cricket this year. Uh, and in those conditions, to go out and score a match-winning 81, uh, when South Africa were in a bit of trouble, I think we were 29 for three after the first couple of overs inside the power play. Um, and it was slow going for everybody. Everybody that came to the wicket was struggling to get, a, get to grips with how it was playing. Uh, and Heinrich Klaassen just looked like he was playing a completely different game to everybody else. Uh, and I think it gives a, a little bit of a headache for tomorrow's game because obviously now South Africa can close out the series with a victory tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, three the tails are up, baby. Exactly. <laughs> and now you look at Heinrich Klaassen's performance and you think, well, how do you leave out a guy who's just won you the game, yeah, but also exactly. the guy who has to come in is your best wicketkeeper batsman. So, yeah. good luck to Mark Archer. Uh, yeah, no, they'll have chats, but they'll have, <laughs> they'll have chats. chats, of chats, and they'll chats. Have chats. Uh, we had Stella weighing in as Stella. <laughs> Tell us what you have to say. Stella on our WhatsApp line. Let's take a listen. Good morning, Graeme. 
Morning. Yes, of course, South Africa is going to win the T20 series against India. There's no doubt in my mind. Oh. The way they are playing is exceptionally well. 100%. In fact, Stella it. says yeah. it's, Affirmation. it's going to happen, man. Done. In your heart of hearts, can we do this? Are we going to seal the deal tomorrow? Um, maybe not tomorrow. I think India will probably win at least one game <laughs> in this five-man yeah. series. Yeah. Uh, and I think it might just be tomorrow, just because they, they have a lot more to fight for. If they win, they stay in the series. South Africa will have another chance in the next game uh, to make it 3-1 if India do end up winning tomorrow. But I think India have sort of figured out where they need to improve over these last two games. Yeah, these range finders exactly. might have kind of dialed them in. Yeah, and I mean, South Africa have had, although we've won both games, it hasn't been, the scoreline might suggest it's yeah, been convincing. Been some, yeah, some but some shaky there's moments. been, so, I mean, in the first game, the bowling wasn't up to standard, conceding over 200. It's the runs. highest ever run chase. Right? Exactly. Uh, and yesterday, the batting was a little bit dodgy at times. If it wasn't for Heinrich Klaassen, we probably wouldn't have got close to that 149 target. So there's a lot for both teams to still work on. Um, but I think India might just come back with a little bit more but fire, fire and fury yeah. tomorrow. Uh, but South Africa will end up winning the series. I think. Yeah, man, all you need is that one player to stand up. Now, I've been trying to establish if it's just emotional to see Carl again and me again, or if you've got tear gas in your <laughs> eyes. I don't know what, what is actually going on there. But before he gets too emotional <laughs> about this year's Triggered. footballing highs and lows, <laughs> lest we forget, we are still building towards Father's Day. It's our one day of the year, so let's celebrate in style. Well, listen, with Father's Day around the corner, we want to make sure it is a winning day for Dad this Father's Day with this next recipe. Now, it has everything needed to warm his heart. There is a curry. I'm talking there's lamb. And just to make things easier on you, we've got the cook in the house to show us how we've turned it into a tray bake. This sounds delicious. I've never thought of making this recipe as a tray bake. Well, it's so easy, and you could cheat it even further. If you've got a pan that can cook going to the oven, yes. you can just make everything in that pan one time done. And then in the oven. And, and that's appropriate because I don't like dishes. And oh. I don't want to pretend. I just don't like doing dishes. No one likes dishes. Um, People, you know, we like the easy things in life, but we want the flavor and the deliciousness. And that's what we're going to work on right now. So first things first, I've got some ghee, and I've got... We don't want to what the little darker bits are. I browned some lamb off earlier, and I kept those drippings because there's a lot of flavor in those drippings. You can add them back to the curry, you're gonna get so much more flavor. So get that nice and hot, and today we're using leg of lamb cut. Ooh. Which is delicious. It takes a long time to cook, but if you can imagine, that muscle's working a lot. And during that time, it develops so much flavor. The only thing is, it's a little tougher, which means it needs longer time to cook. So this is a recipe that. you need to allow for extra time. This is the, and that's what I find is the best thing about winter, is the fact that the food you cook normally takes longer to get done. And during that time, it warms up your home and fills your home with like so much aroma and mm. flavor and love. That's why I love this dish. Okay, so heating up all the ghee and that extra, extra lamb fat, and you want to get a nice sear on this lamb, like properly dark and caramelized. Yeah. That's, that's all flavor. Oh, that sounds amazing. And this is Woolies' free-range lamb leg cubes that Clem is using, and it's never given any growth stimulants or routine antibiotics, especially selected for quality, tenderness, and flavor, and it's trimmed for outstanding value. And it's free to roam pastures and natural fields, so this is what you want. You know, everything yeah. is responsible. Re Responsibly sourced. I but it, was gonna and mix it is true, and it makes a, we are. <laughs> and it, it makes a huge difference in the flavor and again being responsible and ensuring that we're able to farm in the future. That's what you have to do sustainably and responsibly sourced meat. Okay, so the trick again, like I said, get it properly nice and brown. And you want to get all that, that, that charred color on there. Once it's really nice and dark and brown, you're gonna go in with your onions. Okay. This dish cooks, like you said, for quite some time, about two hours. So during that time, these chunks of onions are gonna, some are gonna break down, some are gonna just stay there, but it's gonna be so soft and delicious and sweet. So get that into the pan. And as soon as you add the onions, you can add a little bit of salt. And normally when you make a stew, you would usually go in with your onions first. So mm -hmm. I love that you've done the lamb cuts first. Yeah, and the, just kind of, the reason for that is I just want those onions to kind of cook in the lamb fat, using the lamb like as best I can. So using the meat and the fat and getting that flavor into the onions. That's a great way how to do it. Normally, if it's a quicker dish, I would totally brown my onions off separately. But again, like I said, it's gonna cook for two hours. So time's gonna do everything. Then, 
garlic goes in. Ooh. And again, this is chunky. Because it's just going to cook down and cook away. The ginger, though, I would actually just break down this a like, like a little bit. Just give it like a rough chop. So that's going to go in. Okay, so we've added some garlic, we're adding some ginger, you're adding some... Curry leaves. Curry leaves. Curry leaves are... I always say, if you're not good at making a curry, just add curry leaves to it. And it will do it for you. Immediately, just you get all those aromas and the flavours the way it's supposed to be. So... It was so funny. My friend, my brother's friend came to visit one day and his mom obviously doesn't use curry leaves when they cook. And my mom was cooking up a curry and he went to my brother. He's like, Liam, do you know there's a leaf in your mom's food? <laughs> <laughs> it's meant to be there. Meant to be oh there. man, I love it. I love it. And I, I know some people do remove the curry, curry leaves from the curry when they serve it. I'm like, no, don't. It's really good. It's amazing to actually have it in there. Some people even just chow the leaves, which mm. I think is fine. Okay, I don't know about that. I'll just scoop it to the side. Okay, you're about to add a curry. This is it, vindaloo. I'm paste. using the vindaloo curry paste, and it's a quicker way of you know like blending all the spices, grabbing everything in the one sachet. Also, these just like stock up in the drawer that I've got them, and I always know what what it is because when it comes to curry in a hurry, or if you need a curry paste, these are really really great to have. Curry in a hurry, I curry like that. Curry in a hurry. Talking about curry leaves and eating them, if you're looking for like a nice crispy topping to your curry as a garnish, if you shallow fry the curry leaves or just fry them in a little bit of oil. They go super crispy and they make the most amazing like little crunchy element to your dish because you can properly just eat them and they're just crunching your mouth. So that's a great way to like add a, a meaningful garnish to your dish. Okay. Okay, once this goes in, you kind of want to to slowly cook this to start toasting all the spices in your paste. And you notice the color of the oil is going to start changing. When that's that, going to give you that curry color. The curry color, absolutely. Oh, and try and keep your ingredients in the pan. Or you can just hop over to a pot if you want. Next thing is going to be our tin tomatoes. I can open that for you. There you go. Are you doing both? Let's just go for one for now. Okay. So and you can you're see just that using normal tinned one. Yeah, that is the cherry tomatoes. I love them. They're a little sweeter than the normal tinned tomatoes. And I love the actual size of the little cherries, cherry tomatoes in there. Once you've got that happening, we don't waste. No, we don't waste. Is this something you're going to be uh, uh, cooking for Dad on Father's Day? Absolutely. I'm going to make him like a whole lot of his favorite dishes. Ooh. So he's going to have everything on his favorite dish list. Okay. But this and does he have one. many things on his list? Is it a long list? We're actually going to make some of the Father's Day favorites on Wednesday on the show. Okay. On the Culinary Hot Lambling. Ting, ting, ting. Ting, ting, ting. But I know the fact that he's going to definitely want to carry. If the weather's nice, which apparently is not going to be happening, while well, it's going to bribe, but normally do like an indoor poiki. Just like a selection of all his favorite things. He's got a sweet tooth. Amazing. So there will be an amazing dessert table. Okay, now t talk me through this. We have three easy steps ready in two minutes. A side order of Bombay potatoes. So the thing about curries is not just the one element that you have. You've got to put it up with like some naan, a bit of a yogurt dip. The, I've got the Bombay potatoes, which I absolutely love. So you just put it into a bowl. Put it into the microwave and you're good to go. The flavor's amazing. Instead of cooking potatoes in this dish, I'm serving it as a separate element on its own using the Bombay potatoes. Okay. You also get the lentils. You also get the paneer. You get the whole mix. And that way, you, when you put it on the table, everything's like in slightly smaller pots, you create like a, a tarly platter, but on the table. Oh. Everybody gets involved, I've got some naan, hands get in there, everything smells great, everyone's smiling. Amazing. Chef Clem, this is incredible. I feel like we need more time for this recipe, but don't worry, if you want to get your hands on every single ingredient we've used in this recipe, head on over to woolworths.co.za and also stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast show. This whole week, we're going to bring you all the inspiration you need for Father's Day. Yes.
mm. much for keeping it dialed in. Two hours done and dusted. One more to go. Going to be some more majestic, amazing music that's going to hit you right in the fields. We'll be back in the kitchen. And, of course, we'll be bringing you up to speed with all those latest headlines with Carl and the news. Just after 8 o'clock, let's take a final look at your news headlines. The three-month strike at Sibania Stillwater's gold mine on the West Rand has come to an end. The two unions, the National Union of Mine Workers and AMCU, signed a wage agreement on Friday. Workers at Sibania Stillwater's gold operations down tools earlier this year after the two parties failed to agree on a wage increase. Uh, the final agreement is for a monthly increase of 1,000 rand extra in the first year, a 900 rand increase in the second year, a 750 rand increase in the third year and a hardship allowance of 3,000 Rand. The Nelson Mandela Bay Metro, meanwhile, says a number of interventions are in place to maintain water supply. The taps are fast running dry in the Metro. This after the municipality's maintenance team had discovered that water could no longer be extracted from the Mpofu Dam due to low water levels. At least 30 suburbs are affected. Residents have been urged to use water sparingly. The Metro spokesperson, Mtubahan Zemniki, says water tankers will be deployed to the affected areas. On to international news, Pope Francis has apologized to the authorities and people of the Democratic Republic of Congo, or the DRC, and South Sudan for having to postpone his visit to their countries due to an ailment related to his knee and leg. The Pope made his apology while conducting the Angelus Prayer before gathering at St. Peter's Square in Rome. He would have visited the countries from 2 to 7 July, stopping over in Kinshasa and Goma in the DRC and Juba in South Sudan. Russia and China have opened a new cross-border bridge in the Far East that uh, they hope will further strengthen trade as Moscow reels from sweeping Western sanctions imposed after its invasion of Ukraine. The bridge linking the Russian city of Blagoveshenk uh, to the Chinese city of Heihe across the Amur River is about one kilometer long and costs some $342 million. Amid a giant fireworks display, fire freight trucks uh, from both ends uh, cross the two-lane bridge, festooned with flags in the colors of both countries. And wrapping up on a very positive note, a huge sunfish has been rescued from the Robertson Dry Dock in the Vienna waterfront in Cape Town by staff of the Two Oceans Aquarium. The fish had become trapped in the dock as water was being drained out and it had to be airlifted by crane. Claire Taylor, marine animal welfare specialist for the Two Oceans Aquarium, was alerted of the sunfish's predicament and she rapidly organized the rescue team. Tino Williams, the dry dock pump operator, agreed to drop the water in the dock so the rescue team could safely work. Research assistant uh, Kelly chateau Sister said the distress sunfish fish was quite weak so it was fairly easy to flip it on its side to load it onto a stretcher and swim it across the steps of the dry dock together with the stretcher the sunfish weighed 760 kilograms and had a total length of 160 centimeters once out of the harbor we released it held onto it for a few minutes to check if it's breathing before it swam off strongly added chateau sister the fish survived and the fish is happy and that's where i leave your news for now let's check in on the weather zoe brown is standing by Thank you, Wasty. Well, let's take a look at your weather news. Cape Town is on course for a major rainfall over the next 48 hours or so. Over 100 millimetres could fall in isolated regions. The latest cold front has made landfall with the first bits of rain reported last night. Today, we'll see downpours lasting most of the day. It's forecast that in the early hours of tomorrow, rain will pummel Cape Town and environs right through to Wednesday. Less severe downpours are forecast between Cape Agullis and Plettenberg Bay. Central and eastern regions of the Western Cape will see a few intermittent showers and it's Cape Town, the Cape Winelands and parts of the Overberg that will receive much rain. Cape Town to receive between 75 and 90 millimetres over the next two days. Only rural parts of Paul and Groot Drakenstein will receive a higher share where some 100 millimetres can be expected before Wednesday. Well, let's take a final look at some of those beautiful sunrise photos that's been sent in by you, our Expresso viewers. At 6 a.m., we had this one from Lee out in George, who woke up extra early to capture the moody image. Then we also had this one from Owen out in Lakeside with this stunning shot of orange hues as the sun rises up from behind the mountains. At 7 a.m., Clive in the Mother City shared this beautiful image. As you can see, hues of orange and pink reflecting 
the sky reflecting across the water. And finally, we have Debbie out in Marina Beach in KZN with this beautiful photo of pink highlights, uh, you know, highlighting the palm trees in the foreground. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you would love to share your sunrise photo with us, please do so on the Expresso WhatsApp line. That number is 63 408-8863. Well, let's look at your temperatures. If you're in Polokwane, a low of 4 and a high of 23 can be expected. Mbombela, 8 with a high of 28. It's sunny in Pretoria, 7 your low, 20 your high. Johannesburg, 5 reaching a high of 18. Partly cloudy in Mahiking, 7 your low, 21 your high. Cloudstorp, 6 reaching a high of 22. Kimberley, 11 with a high of 22. Bloemfontein, 5 with a high of 20. A sunny day in Richards Bay with a high of 28. If you're in Peter Maritzburg, 9's your low, 27 your high. Durban, 16, reaching a high of 25. Ntata, 10, 25. East London, 19, 28. Partly cloudy in Craddock, a low of 11 and a high of 23. Kabecha, your low for today is 14, your high 26. George, 12, 23. Cape Town, a rainy day ahead with a high of 17 for today. Worcester, 9, reaching a high of 17. Cloudy in Sutherland, 3 is your low and 13, your high for today. And Uppington, expect a low of 9 and a high of 26 degrees Celsius. And that's where we leave your weather on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. All right, so let's switch things up a little bit, sticking with the theme for today, which is all about breakups. And we've been hearing you weigh in on this topic. We're going to be chatting about it a bit more later on as well. Uh, here is one of my favorite songs by a, uh, a superstar, Fantasia. It's called Lose to Win Again. It certainly speaks to the fact that, you know, when you do lose a relationship sometimes, you've got to lose that in order to win again. And we've got one more performance. It's lined up from The Fantastics with today on Standby with the vocals. Do you think, us?
the fantastic band on your Feel Good Breakfast show today. That was absolutely fantastic. What did you think of that? Let us know. Expresso Morning Show, SABC3 with that hashtag, Expresso Show. Have you ever loved someone, but they're not willing to make it work? Sometimes you gotta lose to win again. We'll see you in a bit. Little Sunshine, Everflu C Immune Booster Plus, now with vitamin D. Brought to you by Pharma Dynamics. It's my feel good breakfast show. It is your feel good breakfast show. This is Expresso. You're live in S3. And a little earlier, in case you missed it, we had a panel of individuals chatting to us about breakups, the dynamics thereof, mm. um, how tough it can be in the aftermath as well. It's so important on a Mental Health Monday for us to really unpack this. And we're going to continue this conversation now with our next special guest. Yep, our next special guest needs no introduction. Here to discuss, uh, from a first-hand experience, well-known SABC2 actress and founder of The Power of Wellness, Mona Munyani. Uh, she'll, she'll be talking to us, uh, you know, telling us and taking us through the ways in which we can better cope with a breakup. Mona, it's so good to see you. Good morning, Thank gorgeous. You. Good morning. Oh, man, a ray of sunshine right. in you. this cold, <laughs> rainy winter here in Cape Town. But Mona, you know, it, it, it wasn't always sunshine in no. your world because you found yourself dealing with a separation in the public eye with so many eyes and so many voices. How on earth did you even cope? Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, it, it's such a huge question, but I yeah. think when we tie it down to the base point, you have to be accountable for yourself. Mm. It's about auditing. I call it mm. the system of auditing. You know, after every relationship, you have to sit down, yeah. 
take out the balance sheet, yes. take out the, you know, the, the receipts, I went and be like, eh, what's going on here? <laughs> what was happening? What's going on? Um, but no, it, it really, the power of wellness movement came from the process of me just auditing everything, mm -hmm. not yeah. just the actual breakup. Because I think that's what breakups do. You know, they unpack everything that's lying underneath the surface, everything that you've been avoiding, everything that you ran away into the relationship oh. to go and, you know, hide from. So um, I think the biggest thing for me was just taking accountability of what my role was mm. that led to the breakup mm. in the first place. I love that. So with wellness comes uh, introspection, as you mentioned. Yeah. And, and naturally, everybody brings their own traumas into whatever they're going into as well. And did you find that this was one of the unpacking moments where you had to actually assess to yourself, there's a reason as to why I'm interacting with this individual in a certain way, mm -hmm. why I am not auditing, but just receiving it as it is uh, before you could actually start editing the way you deal with this person. Mm -hmm. so, so tell me about how coming into a relationship with certain traumas of, of your past yeah. uh, it kind of helped you, this breakup helped you unpack that. You know, um, I think we don't realize that we carry certain traumas into relationships yeah. until they end or until something, you know, really big happens. Because the thing about my uh, previous relationship is we had lost a child and then I went through some personal yes. trials as well when my family home burned down and all of these things. So it just led me to realize that indeed, you know, um, there was a lot happening at the time and previously leading up to the relationship that I had to start being accountable for, mm. that I had to start processing, that um, I had to allow myself to really confront in order for me to see why it led to the end of the relationship and how I could really productively move forward yeah. from there. Productively <laughs> move forward. Yeah. I think that's, that's stand out for me because yeah. At the end of a relationship, some people do struggle to yeah. move forward, that they sort of cling on to the experience that has now come to an end, mm -hmm. and they find themselves almost sort of blaming themselves for things that could have gone right, things that happened or did not happen. How do you piece it all together, or piece yourself together at least, or put the pieces together at the end of it? I think it's important to understand that control is a state of mind, like, mm. you know, um, the, and an illusion mm. of that. The idea that we can control the outcome of everything, the idea that we can control other people. Mm. Once you start to release that sort of um, misconception, you are really enabling yourself this ability to live your life with gratitude mm. for the moment. So I think where I'm at right now is I'm allowing myself to be extremely grateful for each moment yeah. and not be so tied up in being obsessed with what the next thing is gonna be. And really avoid trying to control anybody else's actions because you can't you can't yeah. control anybody else's actions so um i think what what empowers me right now is just that it's the the heightened state of being yeah. and allowing that to be enough and knowing that you're only in control of you yourself just this Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of a lot more power to unpack over here with Mona, so she was going nowhere. But if you have any questions, please feel free. Uh, 63 8863 We'll continue this conversation around breakups in the next couple of moments. For now, let's take a quick kitchen break. I never thought I'd be saying the words savory and cupcake in the same sentence together, but here it comes. Thanks to the goodness of clover fresh milk, anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh milk. Made with love by Clover. Oh, it is very <laughs> sinister. No, it's actually amazing. Everyone loves a delicious cupcake, yes, with various types of icing. But have you ever tried a savory cupcake with mashed potato icing topped with fried chicken? I guarantee you haven't. And if you have, I don't know, I think you're lying right now. Jenny Morris now is going to show us <laughs> why we have never tasted this recipe before. We've been sleeping on this. Savory cupcakes. Oh. It's saucy. Mm. Well, have a look at Well, This is the savory. We've got eggs. We've eggs. got oil. oil. We've got spring onions. Oh, nice. Uh, we've got some cheese. Um, this is just going to bung everything Do into it. here. Ming um, mm. Look here. We've got all the... Mm. Garlic powder, for mm. sure. Because now we... Sure. Uh, have you realised that savory. we... 
Garlic powder has been that unsung hero of almost every recipe we've made this year. I think we've been sleeping on garlic powder. No, I honest. just think that the states have now reached South Africa. <laughs> very Cajun, darling. We've very just Cajun. caught up with the rest of the world. But th this is a lovely kind of flavor dynamic for a savory muffin. My go to for the kids. Sometimes I'll kind of go this route just with an egg base yes. um, and leave out the flour. But in this case, we want something that's got a bit of body because it's going to be housing all of the deliciousness on top of it. And this deliciousness is going to pull it all together, doll. Um, and I did promise you that anything is possible with clover fresh milk, and we are proving it right now. And what I love about this milk, as we've proven on the show, is that you get superior quality thanks to a triple protect technology. They've gone the hard yards to ensure you get the best. It's like having a cow literally in your own backyard. Some people do, I know, but we get to experience that with our clover fresh milk every day, and it stays fresh up to 18 days. So when you talk about stretching out that budget, this is an absolute win. And Clover Fresh Milk is packed with the vitamins that we need to ensure that the whole family gets nothing but the best. Um, this is the ultimate treat for, I think, the upcoming Father's Day. I'm just putting it out there. Maybe your dad doesn't have a sweet tooth. He's more of an umami kind of a guy. This is perfect. Okay, have you had time to mix it all together there? Oh, yes, darling. And it was going... Mmm, mm, it's so ready. Fresh. <laughs> um, beautiful. And I love the fact that we're going to be piping our mashed potato. Yes. So I'm assuming you want the mashed potato to be at quite a nice kind of... Consistency, soft consistency. But, but not too runny. Okay. I want it too runny. It's got to hold its shape. Hold yeah. its shape. I'll put some in a bag for you already. I'm a nice Yautable. friend. Thank I'm you. very good to yeah, you. You're the best friend. Am I? I'm a good friend. You hey, are. darling. You're one of the best. So Absolutely now you can pop it, you can, you can go swirly wordy, you can go bloop, bloop, bloop. It's, it's yours because you're a dad, you can choose the design you want, okay? Oh, this is fun. And this is one of those things where you can get the kids involved. Yes, they'll love that. It's so nice and easy. And you can also flavor your potato um, with any flavor you want. Ooh. I've overfilled these just ever so slightly. So here's a hint and a tip. Okay. Do it to about this level here because then it still needs a chance to rise, okay? Okay, ta-da, I went for individual little gloops and then I went for one full-on no, beautiful roast. Get in there. Dad's wanted big and bold. <laughs> come on, Daddy, come daddy, on, Daddy. Daddy, mo, mo, Morris. Bring me I your Daddy. I love it. Beautiful. Do you like gravy? I do, I absolutely adore okay, gravy. Okay, you're going to put as much of those little chicken nuggets on his... Oh, look at yeah, that gravy. No, no, put it here. Okay. Take those off. Yeah. <laughs> that looks like Mount... Uh, sauces. <laughs> Mount <Montessauces. laughs> Vesuvius. <laughs> look oh, at that. Oh, yum. Oh, yummy, look at this. Mm, and this mm, is nice. Mm, You've got a, a contrast of textures. Obviously, you've got the beautiful yes. um, cupcake, you've got the mash. We're going to crown them off with one of those. Yes. Oh, how beautiful is yes. that? Yes. And then... Some green. Yeah, some then we're going to finish them off with some beautiful... Um, we, can, we can even... Look at them, they're so juicy. Oh, Let's that looks absolutely yeah. amazing. That? I love this. It's quick, it's yes. simple. You can make a lot so the whole family can yeah. be fed, but this is like a really Do novel you know way. Even if it's not like for a main course for Daddy, it'll be a starter or something to frost around the bride. Yeah. Because I know your boys are going to be you like to No bride, doubt. Come. We'll be your servants. Um, <laughs> and as we sit under our umbrellas, oh, how spectacular mm. is so that? that. Wow. It's simple, it's easy, and it's been elevated. And, of course... You can do it yourself if you missed any of the steps. Take a look at this little blow-by-blow blow, and then head over to expressoshow.com to get all of the ingredients.
qualified chef looking to pocket a whopping 15,000 rand in cash and the title of Excellent Young Chef for 2022, then listen up and enter now. Entry is easy. Simply follow the Excellent Young Chef competition link on Afternoon Express's Facebook, Twitter or Instagram pages and upload a video of you sharing your name, a short intro about yourself, when and where you qualified and your signature Excella dish using Excella Thai long grain rice, sunflower oil or mayonnaise. T's and C's do apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on this beautiful Mental Health Monday as we zone into coping with a broken heart, uh, which we know can be really, really painful, yeah. leaving people with grief, uh, you know, and people feeling that they've lost so much in one way or another. And we're back with actress and businesswoman Mona Monyani, who's chatting to us about her very own experience with heartbreak and talking a little bit about uh, her journey to healing and how we can all take some inspiration from that. Mona, thanks for staying with us. Thank you. So before we we get into uh, our further conversation, I think it's important for us to hear from you on 0634088863. So we have Shauna from Johannesburg who'd like to weigh in. I would like to say that after a breakup, you should focus on yourself more because when that person is out of your life, they are out of your life, they broke you and I feel like you should build up yourself again and I'm Shauna by the way. Bye! Thank you. <laughs> Bye! Basically, that's what Shana's saying uh, to, you know, somebody who's broken her heart. Just bye. Yes, yes that's bye. Out. I love that. Thanks, Shana. And then we got uh, Colleen from Cape Town who'd also like to uh, have a word. Good morning, Espresso Colleen here. The thing that got me through a heartbreak and a breakup was I went out with this guy for eight years and then we broke up after marrying five getting married for five months we broke up so yeah the thing that made me strong at that time was actually my kids my baby mm -hmm. i had a baby at a tail so looking at him reminded me that i've got love from two boys so why sit and cry and move over a man mm -hmm. Mm. That's not gonna be there forever. Mm. While my kids is gonna be there forever. Oh. And yes, yeah, okay, that's, Colleen, that's, that's done. Beautiful. I love that. Yes, ma'am. I think it's also. I think there's something there is that when you go through a breakup, very often we're quick to look at all the terrible things that it's left us feeling, but we forget to actually go and count all the amazing moments and memories that have helped us grow with this person and that we should actually honor that moment and say, well, it's come to an end. Heartbreak or no heartbreak, yes. there's so much that we can take out of it, right? Yes, I think that we need to stop looking for love only in romantic relationships. Mm. Love exists in family, friends, and your colleagues. Love exists within yourself. Mm. And 
it's when you give the self-love the kind of definition that you give the romantic love that you really are going to be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's important for us to be so defined in our self-love that when we meet other people, it really is an exchange of energy. It's not somebody trying to fill you up or um, you filling them up. Mm -hmm. But it's also so important to honor love where we find it. You know, I love when she's speaking about her babies, because yeah. I'm a mother as well. Mm. Um, but you do have to look for that in other spaces. People are defining um, their romantic relationships as they own, end all and be all. Mm. And, and that's unhealthy, that's unhealthy. And you know, the, the no. sad thing is that when a relationship breaks apart, I find that love is tainted. On, on all platforms yeah. and this is why you have to go back and do the the work yeah. and I, I think the work comes through I mean just organizations such as yours mm -hmm. power of wellness mm -hmm. because you make people more perceptive to to love and, and empty their cups so that they can receive so I think people want to walk with you I mean I, I'd like to I would hope so we want to walk with you, with you. Yeah. we want to we want to walk with you so yeah. tell me about <laughs> what you are doing and and obviously we know what the birthplace of this thing yeah. is but the power of wellness like what is it actually about and how can we get involved so I have various activations that I used to do before COVID yes um, it's it's been sort of redefining it now but it's a platform that aims to really give us a different perspective and to prioritize conversations that help us prioritize our wellness, yeah, you know, yeah. emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and otherwise. So what I really do mostly is just Whoever is out there who's a wellness ambassador, somebody who's out there really spreading light in the world, mm. this is the platform where I, I hope to engage with them mm. and really showcase them to the rest of us. Because what I realize in my darkest moments is that commercially there's so much going on that doesn't speak to our healing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's important for us to just insert those pauses, those moments in the commercial space that says, okay, we're going through some things. Yeah. This is how you can go through it. This is how you can yeah. process it. Okay, carry on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah, for me, the, the most important thing is having those conversations. Mm. Because once you change this, everything else is impacted. Mm. Mm. Mona, may Scott, tell me this. <laughs> when it comes to support structure, because you yeah. need a support structure when you have come out of a relationship, because mm -hmm. most often you have lost the person who you sort of counted on for mm -hmm. support. What alternative ways and platforms and channels and people uh, should we be looking to for this, uh, you know, support when we need it? Mm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use an, um, a very unpopular answer. I'm gonna say turn to God. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say define who God is for you. Mm. And by doing that, you have to listen to yourself spiritually. I, I, I would love to say, you know, go to your parents or go to your friends or go to therapy or do that. Yeah. It is important, but I feel like redefining your spiritual identity is one of the biggest, most important things that you can do for yourself. For me, that is where I go to beyond anything else. I have to go back to who I am as a spiritual being yeah. in this human experience, realign myself, ground myself, and then ask the questions I need to in order to navigate forward. Oh. So I will say that. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> you know, Yo, Thank you so, go so down, much for that. that. <laughs> I want you to come back, please, because uh, there's so much more to discuss, but mm. we will definitely bring you back. You are you're such yeah. an incredible individual, mm. and I, I want to applaud you for, for facing your trauma, owning it and developing something with it that helps others. I think that's, that's power. That's incredible. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for joining us. Okay, now listen, uh, last week on our Mental Monday, yeah. uh, Mental Health Monday, we spoke about reevaluating relationships, especially during lockdown and what that looks like. Uh, this morning, we sort of went deep into looking at uh, heartbreak and what to do to cope with that at, that, or at the end of it. And may, we've got a quote to inspire everyone today as you step into your Mental Health Monday. This one uh, is from Mandy Hale. Yes, indeed. So the quote reads, reads as follows, you can love them, forgive them, want good things for them, but still move on without them. Ah, there we go. Every relationship is like a fingerprint. Each and every single one of them presents itself in different ways, uh, but we all do have ourselves, and it's a journey of self-discovery and rediscovery constantly. And at the end of the day, it's all about love, love of self and love of others as we share it with them. Thanks, Mona. Thank you. Thank you yes. <laughs> Yeah, as my two-year-old would say, see you later, I'll be like a little bit like a later.
Just get Is it out meant of to here, be alligator? Please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, no, you, maybe this will help you move on. Maybe this will give you the inspiration to move on and maybe reconnect with your bestie because Christmas has come early on Expresso as Golden Cloud and Beacon search for South Africa's best friends baking duo. So from gogos to grandkids, no matter what your age is, grab your best friend and stand a chance to win a 50,000 Rand grand prize in the ultimate Christmas in July Bake Off. Oh, mm. and that's going to be so exciting. So create your own with Golden Cloud and Beacon to enter the challenge. Now share your photo of the bake on the Golden Baker Search Christmas in July edition competition post and that is available at the Expresso Facebook or Twitter pages and use that hashtag Golden Baker Search or you can WhatsApp your entry to 063-814-2300. And tell us why you are SA's best baking duo and why you think your creation is the best. See, I had a little bit of snow, <gasps> and that, that little man, snow. the gingerbread man that you were worried about lying down, he's yeah. doing snow angels. Is he doing snow Look angels? I feel like you need to be able to see him. Uh, so, the, the, the bottom line here, guys, is for all of you out there who have a passion for baking and you think you've got the talent and want to share that with the country, then this is your chance to put yourself out there. You could be one of the five finalists competing on Expresso for that grand prize worth 50,000 Rand. The winning duo will be crowned on our show live again in July. That's exciting. And the end, so make sure you enter the Golden Baker Search Christmas in July edition and stand a chance to win one of two hampers weekly. And that is valued at 500 Rand. Yes. It's brought to you by Golden Cloud and Beacon. Entries close on the 17th of July. And those T's and C's are available. You can find them on our website, expressoshow.com. I, I was going to ask you what your favorite flavor is, and then I saw mine. And I'm Ooh, sorry. I have it's a got weakness for white inside. chocolate. Go for it. It's yours. It's, it's all yours. Mint for me. Ivory the cream. Room. There we go. Enjoy. Oh my Want to win a taste of the smooth life? Buy a Tropica, find your unique code under the cap and stand a chance to win your share of 100,000 Rand worth of Uber vouchers. If you find the word treasure under your cap, you will win one of these 10 big prizes. A gas hob, a fridge, a clothing voucher worth 10,000 Rand, one of three rest assured beds or one of two Uber vouchers worth 10,000 Rand each. You could also win a trip for two to the smooth Seychelles or a whopping 250,000 Rand worth of prizes from Suzuki. So buy a Tropica today and you could win big. See pack for details. Tropica, nothing smoother. Panado Pediatric Syrup 5 mil sachets. They're really convenient to pack and easy to use, so you're always prepared for pain and fever anytime, anywhere. <laughs> oh man, I absolutely love the fact that we are celebrating our dads. I love that. I think dads are not just great men, or at least striving to be great men, but also striving to be great fathers. And Panado are giving you the chance to be a winner every day every day with a cash prize of two and a half thousand rand up for grabs and all you have to do really simple is reply to our facebook or twitter post and tell us about your phenomenal dad or husband that father figure in your life and today we have our fifth lucky winner on the line right now can we get a drum roll please oh 
congratulations to Antoinette Ooh. Pritchard. Yes, we love you, Antoinette. Antoinette, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you are a winner, Antoinette. Let's actually look at what your post said. Uh, you sent in the submission saying, my husband, John Ricardo Pritchard, is a pillar of strength, joy, and support in our home. Oh. His works are endless and sometimes thankless, but in the end, it shows in the sound and well-mannered children he raises. He might disapprove of our children's misdeeds, not letting them get away with everything by using tough love through the power of his words to prove a point. He is a good father that loves his family and children, which makes all the difference in our lives with wow. hashtag a dose of care. What oh, an Antoinette, I want to marry your husband. He's <laughs> the most amazing guy ever. Um, Antoinette, congratulations. Two and a half thousand rand is yours. How are you feeling? Wow. <laughs> I feel awesome. Very, very awesome. Thank you very much for Express Morning Show and for Naru Issa for choosing me and Hamid as the winner. We really, really appreciate it as a family. Thank you. Uh, you, you earned it with that beautiful dedication. Yeah. It's absolutely lovely, yeah. So tell me, Antoinette, how will you and your kids be celebrating your husband this Father's Day? Um, well, me and Abby, the uh, kids are in the church. My eldest daughter will be sitting in the next breakfast for us. Um, before we go to church tonight, breakfast, like always, after church, we will see with Abby in the third night. Steak, someone who might be fun. He likes the steak. So, we'll talk to you the I love it. I'm not even going to ask what you're going to spend the two and a half thousand rand on. Go and buy yourself something special. No, you better get Dad something really nice. Um, it looks like, looking at the photos, <clears throat> you have the most beautiful family. So savor every second that you can with them. And please give him and the rest of your family, your kids, a big hug from the Espresso family. We are so, so pleased that we could make you a winner this morning. Congratulations. Once again, thank you, Espresso. This is a lovely pleasure. Yeah, really appreciate it. Ah, oh, fantastic. Go and enjoy your Father's Day and spoil Ricardo Rotten on this <laughs> one. A big thank you to all of our entrants so far. Uh, from what we've read, uh, you know, the people really do have some phenomenal dads yeah. out there, and there's still a chance to be the next winner. All you have to do is enter our Panado Father's Day competition right now, and here's how you can enter. Celebrate our dads and win. Catch Expresso to stand a chance to win a 2,500 Rand cash prize from Panado each weekday morning from the 6th to the 16th of June. Tell us what the best thing that your dad or husband does that makes him a phenomenal dad. Don't forget to include the competition hashtag a dose of care. Each day's competition closes at 10 a.m. and T's and C's can be found on expressoshow.com. It's time to get all chocolatey and, and loving, which is important. And that love goes towards our fathers, our dads. They're just as unique as Lint's Excellence uh, flavors. Uh, the combos are like uh, caramel with a touch of sea salt. Hello. Uh, cranberry, almond, and hazelnut. Yes, please. And Lint's Excellence uh, newest edition, which is mango and almond. Now, this has to be one of my all-time favorites, the sweet tropical notes of the mango. Rrr. Balanced by the crunchy almond slivers, uh, makes for a delicious and unique indulgence with absolutely no bitterness and yet to whip up a decadent lint cake for Father's Day Woo! because we lint so much yeah. from our dads. <laughs> it's Chef Chumik. Yes, girl. We lint so much we from our We lint so fighters. much from our tatas, our fathers, I like it. our padres. I love it a lot. I like what you said. Thank um, you. And because you are, we are celebrating fathers, yes. we want to make sure that not only do we give them a dessert that they can enjoy, but a dessert they can enjoy by themselves. So That's we're correct. A one-tier chocolate cake. So, Daddy, you don't have to share this cake Woo! with anyone. Thank you. Eat it. You know what? It. What's going to happen when, when your dad gets this is that you're also going to have one tear here on the cheek. So it's a one-tier cake and then a one-tier, just like that. <laughs> I love you so much, Daddy. Woo! Okay, I'm fine. Right. So. Moving along, to Moving the along recipe, swiftly, the darling Chef Chumi. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this together. I'm ready. Right. Let's make it right. Yes, yes. Lint excellence. Excellence. Yes, excellence. I, I do understand that these are very, uh, excellence. very different. Uh, excellence. <laughs> it's a more French uh, thing. So, uh, Lint excellence.
So what are you going to do? You said you got a boat there? I have yes, got some boat. water. <laughs> I don't know what water is in French. But I've got water, Agua. I've got sugar, <laughs> I've got some butter. Uh, These are going to melt up. And the reason we're right. doing this, and people might not understand why sometimes when people make chocolate cake, there's hot. What are you laughing about, bro? I'm just smiling because it's been a while since you and I cooked. It has been a while, right? it's a privilege. It's like, honestly, I was going to say, this is going to be like the mother of all the recipes. But now this is going to be the figure. father of all recipes. You are the father figure for me. Thank here. you. When I, I come onto this show, Yes, yeah. thank you. That you makes me feel very old, but <laughs> take it. <laughs> I'm dissolving my sugar and butter into some water to get it hot. And what uh, the heat does for the cake is that it actually helps it with giving it a nice, nice texture, mm. but also it releases that flavor of the ingredients that we're going to be putting in here. Like, for instance, we've got some cocoa powder yes. that we're adding in there, so it intensifies that chocolatey flavor. Ooh. And if you've seen these moist cakes that are just so fluffy, it's because of that step where the water has been, basically it's been heated up to that temperature to allow it to that. Manage. That is That is brilliant. And also, like, each step is also a tribute to, to dads. So let's be honest, like, you, you said you heat it up there, dad's it's warmth up. comes through. So you have to think about dad's warmth while you're heating the butter. And this is the pot. where you come in. And this is where... Dad's what warmth I'm, is in this cream. So what am I doing with that cream? But we are going to be putting our chocolate into the rest of our ingredients now. And we're using our Lindt Excellence. I've gone for the mango and almond flavor. You're using the caramel with a touch of sea salt. That's I love this one. going to go into a But, um, Mr... Oh, is, uh, ganache. Ganache, fine. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dima Zamatos from uh, Lynn showed me a trick on how to break it apart and make sure you get those beautiful pieces before they go into your um, ganache. Show me. As it is, just tap it. Keep tapping it. Uh -huh. What this does is because it's so nice and flaky and soft and thin, you can you basically get into those small pieces that you... Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, keep doing that. I love wow. you, Daddy. <laughs> you are my hero. And you're wrong. Yes! Uh -huh. oh, that's, that's, thank you. Next I love that. Step. That was really wonderful. <laughs> and now I can feel that we've, we've literally cracked this all up. This is We've cool. cracked it okay. all up. And now, now I'm going to go with the rest of my chocolate pieces. It's Hello. Heat. Look at that. Exactly. Our nice Ganache. It's going to be great. It's going to be delicious. You're going to get those flavors of the mango from my side. But from your end, you're going to be getting those caramelly flavors with that touch of salt that's in that uh, chocolate. So you can imagine the, the flavors of the mango and the almond and the inside of the cake, and then the flavors. Sorry. Control. I forgot <laughs> we needed to do There's this. There's no soft control. <laughs> that's so good. OK, is this still warm? I want to make a good ganache for you. Just pour it on top of your chocolate and let it dissolve. OK, I'll do mm. that. While that happens, I'm going to finish the rest of this cake now. I also want to tell you a couple of things, because I didn't get to this earlier, because you and I okay. were just celebrating being in the kitchen again. <laughs> but um, there are some things around Lynn's excellence, I have to say it properly, is it's the perfect Father's Day gift. I mean, hashtag as unique as dad. Now, try Lynn's combos. Uh, as I said, new mango and almond, yummy. Uh, taste, uh, the taste is gorgeous. I, t I just actually tasted a few of the bites before we did this thing. And you know what I like about it? I like it that the sweetness of the mango as well, it kind of, it's so playful with the bitterness of the chocolate. Yes, so that's, that's, you know what, I almost feel like it's, it's, it's got this versatility in baking. Exactly. Like, you know, a different variety of cakes. Because I, I associate uh, citrus and chocolate go so well together. And I mean, mango, the, the, the notes are not citrus, but there's something beautiful. But I also had, um, a little sneaky taste in this my little ganache, which is a caramel with a touch of sea salt. Uh, this cranberry, almond, and hazelnut, orange intense, which has got some slivers of almonds in it as well. So Lindt Excellence is the finest dark chocolate made with the uh, best quality ingredients and ensuring uh, sort of no terrible bitterness, but there's just something so rounded and gorgeous about the flavor. Now, Lindt Excellence flavors are sweet and are your perfect entry into the world of dark chocolate. Lindt Excellence also range that pairs beautifully with Hear this, wines or coffee? Yeah, I'm glad we got I to that point. I'm just saying, if we get to that point <laughs> and you got a Father's Day idea with wines and coffee, it is a match made in absolute chocolat de heaven. So, Lynn Excellence is great for, it's great for baking, as we're doing today, and enjoy it even better on its own, as I tried earlier. So, please try this recipe. All the ingredients, Chef Chumi's been up all night putting them on expressoshow.com. Right, where are we now? Awesome. So your ganache is going to slowly start melting up, so you can yes. start using your spatula to put that Thank together. You. And what I've done here is all those hot ingredients we had, our sugar, our butter, and our chocolate with the water, all of that was whisked together. And then yes. I added our egg, egg and our chocolate into that. And then our dry ingredients, which is our flour, our baking powder, our salt, all of that wow. went to this. And now all of this is going to get into our baking tin. It's going to bake at 140 degrees for 35 minutes. That, okay, but already... Yep. Like, I feel like you could eat that on its own. Well, that, I didn't want to say it like that. That batter but... looks like it needs to be consumed 
or frozen for later. You could do that. You could definitely, if you want to also, this yeah. is just a trick. If you're making ice cream, yeah. you make your ice cream, take this part, fold it into the Stop. ice cream. Stop, please. And I'm just giving you tips and tricks. Okay. Anyway, once we've baked this, that ganache goes into the cake. And, and then done cake delicious. We do a glaze and we're good to go. Father's Day Father's Day. Life changed. Yeah, life changed. Done. Dusted. That was, that was one of the most beautiful recipes I've ever had in my life. And I think that it's also versatile because, you know, you don't have to stick to one of the uh, length excellence. You can also also try a variety. So if you want something that kind of resembles, let's just say like a you know, peppermint tart, you know, we've got the mint and tents that could actually add there. Let's just say if you want to do something a bit more um, traditional, you know, sort of like those uh, like chocolate and citrus go all together, well, then it's orange and tents over there. If you want, if you've got somebody on a health buzz and you can, uh -huh. and you want to reassure them, you can say there is an 85% cocoa that we add here. So please don't worry. We've done the necessary due diligence. Maybe the unctuous decadence. How about the caramel with a touch of sea salt? Because you know how salt and sweet, they like work together like you and I. In the Kitchen. It's just like, brah, ganache. So uh, then also mango and almond as we use today. It's just, it's light, it's bright, and it's gorgeous. It reminds me of somebody. As you need anyway. dad. Yes, so this is great. Expressoshow.com. <laughs> Please go get the recipe. This is wonderful. There, clearly there is a flavor for anybody <laughs> that wants to try something. But uh, we are giving away, here this, a 1,000 rand hamper of Lint Excellence range of chocolates. Reply to the competition post on our social media pages and tell us why your dad is so unique, just as unique as some of the flavor options of Lint Excellence. Now remember to include the hashtags as unique as dad and the hashtag lint excellence t's and c's can be found on expressoshow.com so just give dad the love that he deserves do it through lint excellence because we learned so much from them thank you still works lint excellence refined chocolate pleasure lint master swiss chocolatiers dads and win. Catch Expresso to stand a chance to win a 2,500 Rand cash prize from Panado each weekday morning from the 6th to the 16th of June. Tell us what the best thing that your dad or husband does that makes him a phenomenal dad. Don't forget to include the competition hashtag a dose of care. Each day's competition closes at 10 a.m. and T's and C's can be found on expressoshow.com. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso. And before we finish off the show, we have one final performance from the fantastic band. And they are on the Expresso stage, ready to kick your Monday off on the right note. And here they are with Mikasa's Mamela. Take it away.
or just for the sake of it, here's the toastiest ways of keeping winter at bay, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.